Carl Mormont was a mercenary and had no idea how he got here. Lyle, who kept a wood shop in Edo, didn't know what was going on. They also had Grint, who worked in an antique shop in Galtia, and Jenna, who had lived in the woods all her life, and Han Aylet, who was a farmer. All eleven people had no idea how they ended up in this place. It was like some kind of dream. Han suggested that they might have been drawn here by some wizard or they were doing some experiments, but Lao said that was nonsense. They were all from Teonia, and if they kept asking the others, they might figure something out. But suddenly they saw a little fairy who told them not to worry. The master would be back soon and they would start the battle, so they should get ready. They looked at her in surprise and asked who she was. She introduced herself as the fairy manager. Her name was Isabel, and she said that if they didn't want to get hurt, they should stand in a column and get angry. Carl asked her if she was the one who had dragged them here, but she was in no hurry to answer. Then Carl wanted to pull out his sword because he didn't want her to get away with kidnapping people. But Isabel told him to calm down if he didn't want to lose his head. But this made him even angrier, and he started to approach her. Then Isabel did what she warned Carl about. His fighting spirit will be remembered forever, and he will go into the arms of the goddess forever. But it was a stupid death from stress. Isabel told the frightened people that she warned him, and if he had listened, this would not have happened. Anyone who laid a hand on her was dead, and that would be her protection. But the panic of the people would not be stopped. They realized that Carl was dead and got angry at the fairy for it. Instead of telling them what she wanted from them, she told them, that all she wanted from them was for them to obey her and fight with honor, which was easy enough. Suddenly, Isabel noticed that the Lord began to sort them and create a squad. She ordered everyone to gather and the crack, which was a kind of portal, began to open. She told the boys that they had to enter the portal if they didn't want to repeat Carl's fate. Suddenly, Han called her dot. He said he was sure she wanted to conquer the so-called tower too let her master give them weapons. From now on, they were just a group of one-star people. She didn't want to let them go as cannon fodder. The only two-star hero was definitely killed. They needed weapons at least. Jenna listened to their conversation and didn't understand what tower they were talking about. Carl was as strong, smart, and agile as possible. Looking at what was left, Fairy agreed with the farmer. She told her teacher that the men had no equipment and asked if he wanted to give them something to improve their fighting. Meanwhile, while Fairy was deciding who would get what weapons, Lal asked how he knew this place, and said he didn't know much because he hadn't been here for a long time. Jenna was scared of the guy, he knew something. Khan said if they delayed, they would die. He led them to a building and told them to take their weapons there because it would start soon. They were frightened and asked what would start, and calmly, Conley said that it was a fight. Everyone was scared because some of them did not know how to fight, but they had never even fought, like children. They started to take away weapons, who had time to take them. They came out of the building already armed and saw that Carl's body was gone, but the fairy wasn't going to tell them everything. She told them all to go into the portal. This scared the people, but the fairy urged them to go in quickly while the fairy and the rest of the people fought. Jenna noticed that in all this chaos, Ham was just inspecting his shield. She took the courage to turn to him, telling him that he knew exactly what was about to happen and knew who the fairy was and why they needed the weapons. Han told her that the only thing she needed to do now was to kill the enemy by entering the arena, and she would figure out the rest as the events unfolded. Suddenly, they saw Cal, Cod, Linto, and Jackson walking into the arms of the goddess their fighting spirit memorable forever. Han suggested that it was all because they were one star. Jenna asked what happened, but the guy asked her to be quiet. The squad was completely destroyed, which Isabel didn't expect. Han said that it happened surprisingly fast. They died on the first floor. Then the recruitment of the new squad started. They were also one star, and Isabella ordered them all to go into the portal quickly. Jenna still didn't understand what happened and why no one came back from the portal point one of the members tried to arrange with the fairy not to go there for health reasons. 
Jenna knew he was perfectly healthy and just told him that they would try to survive somehow by working together. Isabel said they were making too much noise and told them to shut up and get ready. Everyone was scared, but they all went through the portal. Once there, they looked around and couldn't figure out what the place was. It looked like a temple. They saw a big screen that said this is the main dungeon and this is their current challenge. Conquer the tower and save the world. The gate was opening and they were told to get ready. Khan personally ordered them not to scatter as it had all started. They woke up in a completely different place. Also not realizing where the level 3 goblins were in front of them, they were on a battlefield. Dot he repeated again that if they were distracted they would die, so they had to be alert. But when he looked back, he saw that some of them had already dropped their weapons and fled because Jenna was scared. Her stats dropped by 30%, as did the others who fled. But they didn't go far because they were stopped by an invisible wall. They hadn't yet realized that no one would let them out of here, and the wall wasn't going anywhere. Khan looked at those assholes and Jenna asked him if they would let them out if they defeated the goblins. But he just looked at her. After a while they were standing next to each other, and he asked her if she knew how to shoot a bow. Jenna's father was a hunter that says it all. Khan stood at the front and shot from behind. The girl asked what would happen to the three, but Khan told her to ignore them. The goblin started to advance, and to tell the truth, Khan didn't know how to wield a sword and shield. The goblins ran towards them with all their might, making terrifying noises. The guy's name was Han Isat, and his real name was Han Zijin, and it looked like he was drawn into a random game. The game was called Peak Mai and was created by a game studio. The goal of the game was to conquer a tower consisting of 100 levels, helping the heroes to get resources and organize a base camp. It was necessary to clear the tower using tactics and strategy. Yesterday, he lived normally. But today, he was completely immersed in the game. The hero ranks ranged from a minimum of one star to a maximum of seven stars, except that Han was a complete unlucky jerk. Even after using thousands of free prizes, he never got a hero above level 5. In the dungeon drop, a book about changing fate to create a 7-star hero, dot he had to participate. The game CH Osmi had some pretty strict rules of the game. Unlike other Grandi Locos, Green Deal was a game that required repeatedly completing the same type of tasks to succeed. No matter how much work and love you put into a character, once you die, it cannot be resurrected. Suddenly, he saw that 38 players were terrified, their stats decreased by 30%. The household did not understand what they were afraid of. One of the players, Diora, advised them to retreat. Ham didn't care. He needed to recognize the boss patterns. Diora started to panic. He saw someone with level 999 appear. There was something strange about his name. It looked like a bug. The buzz was lost. And it was definitely a bug in the game. All the characters were destroyed in the same way. They were destroyed without even taking a good look at what the boss had done. He never learned anything. Suddenly, the same character looked directly at Goon and said that he had found him. Goon didn't understand why the game didn't stop, but suddenly he was enveloped in complete darkness. He received a message that he was registering an account and was asked to choose a name with a minimum of two and a maximum of six characters. Dot he didn't understand anything. Dot he chose a name and didn't understand how it understood his choice. Since he didn't even type, dot, he was welcomed into the world of the game Chesme, dot, he was offered training after which he receives a reward. Dot, he was horrified to realize that his story is that of a boy named Han Ayelit, who lived in a small village in the territory of Guillaume. In the land of unity between humans and non-humans, Tayanai. A an unknown enemy has invaded this peaceful region. He is a wizard. If he wants to save the world, he must climb to the top of the tower and many heroes will accompany him. When he turned around, he saw a goblin. His first task was to defeat the monster that invaded his village. Now Han realized that all this was happening to him in real life. The goblin attacked him, but Han was able to block his attack with his sword. He gathered his strength and thoughts and struck the last blow. 
The thought that he had killed a living creature with his own hands did not occur to him. The first stage was over and Han got his first star dot he walked around all dirty and did not realize how he could have ended up in the game. He saw the buildings in front of him dot it all looked quite familiar. The system prompted him to choose an ally before he moved on to the next stage dot a door opened in front of him and he saw that the system had given him a reward in the form of an ally hero, Shay, who had four stars. Khan couldn't believe his eyes dot he was definitely in the game. Shay opened her eyes and asked who he was dot he said his name was Khan Sejin. She introduced herself as Shay Radastri. She was a knight and his name seemed very strange to her. The system showed that Han and Shay were now a team dot he was asked to find more partners to create a unique team. After a while, when they were already fighting another company of goblins, Shay noticed that Han was a new bee and didn't even have a uniform dot it was true it was almost his first fight unlike him who had never held a sword before the four star shay quickly defeated five goblins she raised her level and got rewards there was a huge difference in skill between them but all the challenges were just ahead the master who accompanied them received a notification that han had successfully won the battle there was one last way to train the path to strengthening the hero is shining. The door is open. Dot he needs to select the fusion tab in the menu. Han realized what he was doing wrong. Behind him was a fairy who said that the master was already waiting for him. Dot he almost didn't hear her name. She didn't notice it at first, but then she was horrified. How did he know her name? He replied that he knew it because he often played this game. His name was Han Sejin. Isabel looked in the book. It was impossible. He was not Han his layout, but Han Sejin. She noticed that he was different from Gorney's light. I in the photo, he did not look like him at all. Hansung Jean was born in Seoul to a Kong Soga family. He wanted to be sent back. The fairy couldn't believe that the boy had come from the land. She was just going crazy. Realizing this, she told him to come out, but he replied that if he did, he would die. She said that wouldn't happen, he'd just quit the game, but it was the same thing. Then she just pushed him out the door so he'd just leave. Shay watched everything and waited for Han. Han's fusion started the upgrade by combining two heroes, with one of the two heroes being used as a sacrifice to increase the other hero's characteristics. At this time, one of them would inevitably be destroyed. The problem was that he only had one star, while Shay had four. A normal player would have no desire to leave him and kill Shay. Dot, he would probably die. This way no one would invest much in the weak hero. But suddenly Han realized that the merge was over. Shay was going to the eternal arms of the goddess. Dot, it was inexplicable. Complete nonsense and not a logical decision. She said she just wasn't chosen, but she left Han. She disappeared into thin air and Han didn't know what to do. Events moved back. He and Jenna were fighting goblins. Some of their team had already been destroyed. If they were distracted, they would have died. Han thought that no matter what he had been through, the hero synthesis had worked, so that you drag the sacrificed hero to another. He was lucky, but Shay was not. Because she was dead. Because she died because of a stupid wizard's mistake, as expected from this shitty game. Jenna said she could handle one monster. But what about the rest of the people? Ham told her to think for herself. But that's when he was attacked by a goblin. Ham thought about how he didn't know how he got here. But he knows for sure that when he crossed over to this world, that level 999 monster was laughing. It was all him. And he was the one who pulled him into this. But he didn't know dot he didn't mess around with the commoner. But they overpowered everyone and Jin noticed Han's condition. The player has minimal influence on the course of the battle in the game. That's because most of the battles are done automatically by the heroes. But even so, the game was played by about 100 million users. The reason for this was that you can watch the world as a god. He was also once a monk who enjoyed this game, creating items, strategy and tactics, developing heroes, and discovering hidden abilities. Even if the game could be called crap, there was no need to give up. Dot. He had to survive. The stage was passed. Jenna got a star. Hong became the most valuable player, and the rest of the team died. 
However, Calm has come to terms with a new gift. It's time to stop acting like a child. He is in the game, revived and called a five-star hero. The hero has only two ways to die in battle or fusion, and he is like a one-star, completely useless in the game. His stats are terrible, his growth rate is extremely low, so he can avoid fusion. He is a CA rookie with no skills. Harm lived with the idea that he needs to survive, take revenge and return. This is impossible unless he takes the first step. He didn't want to imagine how things would turn out. He would die if he didn't. He adapts, and if not, he accepts the rules. He will just get eaten. It's like serving in the army. It's not enough to just be physically strong. You need to change mentally. You won't be able to survive if he panics or gets nervous. After he was able to survive when he was younger, you have to remember that there were no parents or anyone else around to help him. He needs to remember the care that motivated him. Jenna suddenly appeared and asked him what he was doing, and he asked if it looked like he was training to kill monsters. She didn't understand why he was being rude to her because she was trying so hard to find him. Jenna stayed up all night thinking about what she was going to do next, and they couldn't get out of here. Since her father was a hunter, she practiced archery all her free time to stay out of the way. Nothing would change if she just stood there crying, and he knew exactly how to survive. He was surprised that this was really her first real fight. She had definitely spent her entire life inside walls. He asked her about the bow, and she honestly admitted that she was so good at using it. Her abilities were similar to Han's except that she had the skills of a novice archer. However, after the last battle, her performance had increased. Although she was weak in all categories, she already had the skills of an archer. She was an inept goblin master. Even though this was her first fight, she was not a cornered, scared person, and she was definitely an incredible beauty to him. Dot he told her he would help her and extended his hand. Jenna said that her father once told her that if she wanted to survive, she should follow a strong man. Her father was a great man. She was sure that evil would take care of her. She felt sympathy for him and added the bonus of his friendship that happens when people are on the same team. The con man called Isabel, but she couldn't come over right now because she was busy. Although as a busy person, she answered pretty quickly. She told him, she wouldn't tell him no matter how much he asked her dot if he was so curious, he should go to the tower and find out for himself. All the answers are there dot he ignored her indignation and asked if he was the only one who could see the status bar above his head. She pretended not to understand what he was talking about, but then he told her that he could clearly see that the fairy was now at level 257. She assumed that it was because his life had become mixed up with the game and his past life, but immediately realized that he shouldn't have said that. Seeing her reaction, Karn saw his confidence only grew stronger. He is the only one who can see the game's messages and Master SM's messages. He asked what they would do if Master left the game, and she replied with horror that she was just praying that it wouldn't happen. What happened when the Master, i.e. the player, paired him with Shy was not a coincidence. This choice is made once, 100 times. The nuances of the game did not allow you to just abandon Shy. It had been a week since E had been in the game, and he wondered if time was flowing the same way as on Earth. But Isabel asked me to stop this stupid talk, and she wasn't going to answer him. But then Han realized that time changes here. Thanks to Isabel for the tip. He was incredibly annoying her. The fact that a fairy could even touch him but could intervene in self-defense or when someone wasn't listening to a riot. But that didn't stop him from learning all the rules. It was a vital necessity in this world, otherwise he would die. Jenna asked her what they were talking about, but Han told her that they needed to take the tower. He told her about a being called the Master who gives them orders through Isabel. They have to complete and win all the missions to get to the 100th floor to be free. The girl realized that this meant they would have to fight monsters all the time. So they needed to train and get stronger all the time. She was surprised that they could do it together. But Han said that the master could call for help. For money, which he would do from now on. Each choice would determine their fate, but in the end their lives depended on the master's choice. 
After one day of training, he learned about a funny principle of this world. The next day, the food and supplies would be replenished, and if he thought of the things he needed the next day, they would appear in a drawer or cabinet. Obviously, things like weapons are not on the list. There are also different rules for training to get the effect of them. What he didn't understand about this game now made sense to him. Often heroes of the same rank had very different fighting abilities, but they had one thing in common. They weren't lazy. When training is needed, training doesn't increase performance or level, but it does give skills and improve abilities. Now, thinking about it, he now doubts that the characters he played were artificial intelligence. A inexperienced player classifies his main characters into three categories. The first mental impact a player will not even look at a character who panics easily. Point two e his skills. High level characters who have skills. While most low level characters have talents hidden from the master, the third category is physical. What Han is working on now. Point three days after the master started training, he joined the game. As a result of training, Han was able to increase his skill level. He tried his best. He improved his fencing and shield skills. So, you have to get ready because the master is here. It was a long wait because he was not in the game for three days. The player was wondering what new character appeared. He calls for a new hero, and so they need to stand up as a team. With five people, he will use three challenges. The characters Aaron, Toby, and Jolson appeared. The three of them had one star each, and just as the others didn't know where they were, Jenna immediately told them to get ready for battle. She and Han were supposed to train them all after they successfully completed the mission, but they were too confused. Meanwhile, the ferry was already opening a space-time portal with all the new players joining the first team. Han asked Jenna to take a weapon before it was too late, since last time, everyone died even with a weapon. This time, it was not worth even trying and giving them a gun. The newcomer started yelling at Isabel. The newcomer started shouting at Isabel and demanding to be returned. And Gina said that it would only get worse if they fought with this fairy. Then they thought the girl was with her. But Jenna said she was in the same position they were in. Some of them had a wife waiting at home. Some were poor farmers. They all had reasons to want them to go home. Gina was afraid they would all die. But Han said they just had to stay away from Isabel. But obviously they didn't. She was listening to the fairy they had paid a little for. So she told them to just listen to her, as if the two were Han and Jenna. They were in the basement, and Isabel wanted them to have fun. They were on the second floor. The goal was to destroy all the enemies. While the new kids were panicking, Han and Jenna were already on alert. This time, they were attacked by forest monsters. They were scared, and their number decreased accordingly. Han looked at the girl and she was scared too, and he tried to poke her, but she was very scared and angry. He will deal with the wolves. She will deal with the hobbits. Jenna. Was he no longer afraid? Most likely it was a fleeting fear that she managed to overcome, but the aliens would be of no use. The monster started to approach and Han used his shield and sword to defeat the first one. Because of the crappy weapon, he was still alive. But that didn't stop the guy. When Khan finished with the first wolf, the second one attacked him, and he killed him immediately. And suddenly he remembered Jenna, who was fighting the goblins alone. Running up to her, he saw a bunch of monsters. The girl turned into hedgehogs, spending a huge amount of arrows on them. Harm asked her to stop because the monsters were already dead, so she must have been too scared. The stage was completed. They both got improvements and rewards in the form of gold iron or in leather. They returned to where they were congratulated for successfully sweeping the second floor, but before they could rest, the player decided to send them to the third floor. If this player is really so reckless, he will be thrown to the third floor now, but there will be consequences. Han looked at what he would choose to send them to another task, but they were lucky and the player left the game. Han breathed a sigh of relief. Isabel was incredibly tired, and the guy said she hadn't done anything like them. Han realized the sequence of actions. If time is off here and tasks are done every three days, then in the real world it only takes one day, 
After three days, the host will reconnect. He looked at his performance and noticed that his intelligence had dropped by one point, but his strength had doubled. His performance was increasing day by day, and his growth efficiency had also become much greater. The proof of this is the results. The player was not even in a hurry to play the game. If Han had remained the same as on the first floor, he would not have survived. Meanwhile, the aliens were trying to find out from Jenna where they were and why they had to fight. And these only star people live far away from the fighting. She told them again what they had to do to survive. And they repeated to Genie that he had never fought. But hadn't he even held a gun? No one had ever done that. But they had no choice but to either fight or die.s own oh, now he knows why one star kids are called trash. Mormont, who had two stars, said he was a killer. Could that mean that if you fought, the better chance you had of getting a star? Highly trained mercenaries don't panic unnecessarily. If you throw a recruited one-star mercenary into a fight, he will be in fear and panic the whole time. Those of you who don't need to have three stars, do it. They rush into action. Are they briefed beforehand? Do they know their mission? I'm sure Shay knew, given her attitude and confidence. So Han approached Jenna, who couldn't get along with the recruits, so she asked the boyfriend to intervene. Han didn't really care about the fate of the doomed people, but Jenna saw them as allies who just needed to be persuaded, which was better than nothing, Han said. These people would disappear anyway. She would see that. It wasn't even that they died in battle, but if they didn't eat their fill, they just disappeared. Dot, he advised her to forget them. Soon they would be fighting together again. Suddenly, he saw a newcomer approaching him who was very unfriendly, but Han wasn't going to put up with it and he was pathetic during the fight, hiding behind their backs while he and Jenna bled to survive, which obviously worked on them because Han did what Jenna asked. The next day, the training continued and after the basic exercises, they started training with weapons. However, he just waved his sword and Jenna shot her bow. Han was able to improve his sword and shield skills to level 2. The three recruits never showed up at the training field and they spent time looking for a way out, saying they were leaving, but obviously their search was unsuccessful. Jenna shot her bow at Han, who tried to hide behind a shield, but one arrow hit him in the leg. He told Jenna not to worry about it when she asked frightenedly about his condition. She had to finally understand that the laws of nature don't work the way they do in the rest of the world. The wounds healed instantly. Han gained the skills to tolerate pain and continued his training. The pain defeated him, and it's good that he feels it. Dot, it's proof that he is alive. Dot, it was an incentive to keep practicing. He was able to awaken the skill of basic sword wielding and basic shield wielding. Point three days later, the player returned to the game, and Isabel immediately ordered them all to go out to the square. Jenna was glad that they were having some fun, because she was tired of the same type of training. Constant training, and it seems that she adapted to it faster than Hong. But compared to these newbies, they looked good. Isabel lost her patience and tossed them aside. She was fed up with them, and she would make them apologize in writing. She decided to tell them what she thought of them. Now the mission could begin. None of them dared to deny it. They arrived at the third floor to destroy all the enemies. You could see that their clothes had changed, but that shouldn't scare them. You have to stick to the training tactics. They didn't hesitate to enter the battle and successfully killed all the monsters, for which they received a reward and a promotion. Jenna started to comprehend it, and this time it was a bit boring, and obviously the newbies weren't going to help them. But it's a pity not to be upset that he didn't want to share the experience with these pathetic people. Suddenly, the status window gave a hint that if he encountered naughty characters, you have to spin the Wheel of Fortune. They would become more compliant. It seemed that the player wanted to use this method. He sent them back through the first floor. It was safer, and obviously the player was not a heartless person. The monsters were the same as last time, and no. Han and Ginny took a long time to clean the floor. But the player wanted them to go through this floor again, because the two of them are fast. He wouldn't let them rest. They were sent to the first floor task once again and then given the task to cross the third floor again. 
Jenna was tired and prayed that they wouldn't be sent to the next floor. It was driving her crazy, and they were getting hurt because of these people, but Han told her not to worry about it. Jenna didn't understand how he could think so positively when these people weren't going to change anything, but she calmly replied that the player wasn't rich enough to keep the three forever, even though they were useless as well. Suddenly the player started to synthesize, sacrificing one hero for another to improve his performance on the field. Khan was pleased because now these idiots would disappear without taking advantage of the opportunity he had given them. They were given many opportunities to participate in battles. Even if such little things are not shown on the screen, the player is still aware of what is happening. He knows who is fighting on the front lines, who is actively participating, and who is idling, and Han and Jenna were the chosen heroes. The fairy Isabella ordered Jenna and Jensen to enter the fusion room, and Han assured her that nothing would happen to her. He told Yeltsin that something would happen to him depending on what he was doing all the time. He said that nothing depended on him, and he was just chosen, but Han told him that he was only thinking about it for the first time. Isabel and Han had the same views on the situation. He shouldn't expect any help because he didn't even let anything happen during the battles. Now it could change the situation. Isabel told the man not to delay and just go into the room, although Jelson resisted and said it wasn't fair. The fusion took place and Jenna left the room. He just turned into light and disappeared. She never understood what happened. This is where the unnecessary characters now make some sense. That was Hans Thern Han and Toby were next. Toby was trying to think about being sent home, and Han respected his optimism. The fusion was complete, and Toby disappeared as well. After turning into light, Han came out of the enhanced level and also gained the equanimity skill. He walked next to Aaron. Today the guy was lucky. Jenna asked in frustration if he was right and realized that if the master deems you useless, you will simply disappear into the cell. Han didn't understand the reason for the sadness in her voice. After all, she was so eager to get better, and then asked if the same thing would happen to her someday when she became useless. But Han told her that the stronger they got, the stronger the monsters on the tower floors would be e.so, they would die either at the hands of the monsters in battle or through fusion. Jenna realized that the guy was aware of everything that was happening. Unlike her, Han advised her to follow her father's philosophy. If she wanted to live, she tried to stick close to strong people. The next day, Jenna threw a tantrum and then remembered Han's words about sticking with the strong. All she had to do was be diligent, and then she wouldn't die. She shouldn't have been so worried, but Jenna stood her ground anyway, telling her boyfriend to take care of her. Their conversation was interrupted by Aaron, who came to apologize for being a total idiot and causing a lot of problems. He had made the mistake of retreating behind them. Back then, when they had fought bravely, he had been a coward, but now he was ready to change. Han couldn't just trust Aaron. He even offered to get down on his knees to confirm the truth of his words. It seemed he had finally come around. Ham said he had never fought as well as he did so it was no big deal. But Aaron replied that Ham was much better at it. The only difference was the determination to win the fight and survive. He suggested that the newcomer use a spear, although he wasn't sure, but he had heard before that it was the easiest to use. He asked if anyone knew the difference between melee and ranged combat, and Gina said that the difference was that melee was the sword, ranged combat was the spear, and ranged combat was the bow. Now that there were three of them, that would be the division. He ordered Aaron to prepare for the fight immediately, although he had hoped to be taught beforehand. But Han replied that he had never used a spear himself, so he didn't know how to teach it. Dot he would have to learn on his own. Dot he should thank his luck that he had an opponent to train. Han only had a dummy. Aaron closed his eyes and swung the spear. He didn't need to do that. Even though their fight was without stakes on his life, the guy didn't show his full potential. Dot if it had been a monster in Aaron's place, Han would have finished him off long ago. Dot it might have been a little rough, like the first training session, but Han wasn't going to run with anyone. If Aaron failed, he would leave him behind. Dot he asked him if the guy had a family. Aaron replied that his little sister was waiting for him. 
Han had no one. So Aaron at least had someone to come back to Dot. He asked the guy what would happen if he didn't come back. Dying at the hands of the monster would be scary and painful. Dying during the fusion was the best option if he didn't want to continue. It was better to give up now. Now his eyes really lit up. Han managed to get his emotions out. Han decided to create a forge. He managed to unlock a free space for the building they needed. He realized that the fairy was here and told her that she could come out. She didn't like this behavior of the guy. Han was already tired of her being so irritated and angry all the time. She has to switch. He asked if the player was getting hints from her. Can she go online? If she interacts with the system, she has access to it. She admitted that she likes to spend time online. It's her hobby. So the clue she sent is the basis. The first level of the training pass closes after 10 equipment challenges. Then the forge appears. She didn't understand how he knew that. Han replied that it was a popular post about the game on their site. Point one of Loki's posts. He knew Loki since he was a player in the game. She assumed that Han was sitting on the lower floors. After all, Mr. Loki was a master and a god in the game. He would definitely be the first in the world to have an A5 star hero. She admired him so much because this player made the impossible possible. Maybe he didn't know that in his past life, when he was just a player. But then Han told the fairy that he was a player named Loki. Isabel didn't believe it, and then he told her his account number. Because of the threat of hacking accounts in the game, only the user and tech support know about it. He had nothing to hide, and he offered the fairy to check it out if she didn't believe him. Isabel couldn't believe that Loki himself was standing in front of her. She checked all the data and immediately asked him for an autograph. She will become an AVIP member of the game Ragnaki. She explained to him that this is the cafe of a player, a master of masters. I in order for Loki T to become an AVIP member, a discreet signature is required. Isabel suddenly realized that she had said so many horrible things to Han, but since Han was only one of the stars, he didn't care about her rudeness. Then she asked the guy what would happen to Nephilim without him, but he was wondering himself. Nephilim was called the waiting room. The building has 13 floors. There is nothing in the building but waiting rooms. The capacity of the building is 20,000 people, although most of the rooms are the best for the infrastructure of level 1822 dot, but that doesn't make any sense since the player is here. Isabel wondered what would happen to the 20,000 soldiers, but since it really bothered her so much, she had to send Han back, which she couldn't do. Han knew that she was just an intermediary running errands anyway. Han hopes that the owner of the waiting room, the player who was playing the now, was Voitova, a human from Earth. And all the summoned heroes are not artificial intelligence at all. It's true. The daughter's world is a little different. But they are all human. Mr. Voter doesn't know that they are living people. He's just a user who genuinely enjoys playing the pick me game. To keep him entertained, the heroes face all kinds of challenges. But what really drove home was whether he would return to Earth if he dealt with all 100 floors of this tower. Isabel frankly admitted that she didn't know. Then he asked her a second question, who put him here? This time, Fairy just couldn't answer because she was sorry but couldn't tell him. Hmm, got a dot he remembered that she told him he would find out when he went up the tower. Then he asked Fairy how many players she had available. Isabel replied that for now, she was giving advice opening and closing establishments, and helping to run the offline operations. Each waiting room is different from the other masters, but overall they are almost the same. Then Han asked her if there are 100 million such worlds. The Mobius Challenge, a system that created an infinite number of heroes by mixing 1,000 templates, was a complete lie. Quantum Artificial Intelligence the hero he perceived as an artificial intelligence was actually a real person. Did this mean that the system that created an infinite amount of content had 100 million separate worlds? He couldn't believe that all these worlds in the game were real in another world. Could it be that his rash decisions could lead to the death of a real hero? He called Isabel, who now made no secret of her admiration for him. They practiced. Jenna was a true genius. Her speed was no match for the other five stars. Although she had never held a dagger before, 
she was quick to handle it. Dot on the other hand, Aaron was disappointed. Dot at this rate, he'll die sooner or later, said Jenna. Jenna said. She hadn't fought Aaron at full strength, but he still wasn't that great. But surprisingly, Han didn't want to hear her boast. Jenna thought he wasn't in the mood to train his best subordinate today. Then Isabel interrupted their conversation and told the girl not to harass Han. She was his best subordinate, not Jenna. The fairy, based on what she had learned about Han, could not believe that the girl was talking so dismissively to this genius. But Han immediately assured her that she would not give up her position as Loki's best assistant. Jenna didn't know Loki, and Han told her not to worry. The fairy was just not herself right now. Since the fairy had the right to open the vault, Han asked her to do so. Dot, he took the iron, or leather, and a wooden board from them, and asked Isabel to open the forge. He now explained to Jenny that he couldn't walk around with his old sword forever. After talking to Isabel, he realized that he was half wizard and half hero, and if that was true, only a wizard could invade the territory. Isabel asked what this guy was doing, Levitin or Brennick, but it turned out that the guy didn't have enough resources, no craftman and no blueprints, so there would be a penalty. Han decided to go ahead and do what he had in mind. The difficulty of the task is nightmarish. The harder the task, the higher the reward, despite the penalties that were shining on Han. He wasn't going to back down. He told the fairies to just watch. This is a mini game that only masters play. Most don't, but the reward is worth it. The system said his time was limited, and that's when he realized he was out of shape. But he didn't care. He launched the fairy, watched the hand of the true god, the legend of this game. He was a huge success. He created a well forged long sword. It was strong, light, and sharp. But Han wasn't about to stop there and created a balanced short bow a long-pointed spear, and a sturdy steel shield. All of them were C rank. Dot. He couldn't do better with these materials. He could only make more. When the items were bigger, it would be noticeable. Dot. He also didn't want the master to have any suspicions. Some time passed, and the three of them were already cleaning the fourth floor. Jenna praised the new bow, which pleased her with its quality. She wondered if there would be people who wanted to have such a price and high-quality weapon. But Han assured her that this would not happen as long as she used the personal weapon function. The master overreacted, forcing them to attack with only the three of them. He told Aaron to protect Jenna and do his best. The harpies started attacking, and Aaron quite expectedly got scared, messing up his characteristic. Jenna told him to pull himself together immediately. They would die if he messed up this time. He didn't care. They asked him not to panic, and he said he would try. This time, the three of them worked hard as a team. A floor was completed and Aaron's level went up. They earned gold, iron, ore, and leather. Aaron was very tired and decided to take a break for a while. In fact, he hadn't really been able to prove himself and didn't know what would happen to him. But the notification told a completely different story. Aaron was added to the list of favorites. Considering that this guy would survive, he couldn't believe it was true and was incredibly happy about it. Jenna joked that after the best subordinate, there was another subordinate, but Han didn't consider them his subordinates because technically the subordinate was Cyrus from Niflheim. The five members of the first team are six stars with level 99, who wield five divine weapons that he created himself and have some ultramatic abilities. It is quite possible that one day he will meet them again while climbing the tower. A as long as it's an IDLA game, Apprentice Cirrus will do just fine by itself with Jonas as a backup. They are so smart and calculating that he even started to doubt that they are artificial intelligence. Although now that he thought about it, they really aren't. Meanwhile, Jonah was seriously asking if she was really going to leave. She told him that he himself was well aware that they had almost no time. Every second should be used. Dot, he couldn't guide her properly, but asked her to investigate. She relied on him for the rest. She would soon learn the location of the master from him. Meanwhile, the residence was upgraded to the maximum level. The maximum number of seats was increased. Dot a cafeteria with high-quality food for the characters. Training grounds for the characters, 
to grow effectively 0.3 auxiliary buildings with an armory and a forge. The woodworking and machining shop merged into the gear workshop. The town square was increased to the second level. When we arrived at the square, we couldn't believe that the master had made such changes so quickly dot he had no choice because the fun was about to begin, and through the characters' different reactions and their exciting battles, the master had to feel that they were not just a collection of zeros and ones, but real people. He should realize this because he is a real person dot I in short. Since they have cleaned the floors, the waiting room can be improved. The time of online players is quite fixed. He probably works in an office. He probably watches the battles quite often and can afford to donate from time to time. Isabel said that he was much better off than some undergraduate students because he could donate $65. This game was not like the others because it does not reward you with regular gems for completing missions. There are almost no events during which they could be obtained so easily because the number of free gems that could be obtained was limited. A player who pays to win is definitely appreciated. The master started to summon the heroes. Someone had to show up. This time it was another challenge, and as soon as they finished it and greeted the new guests, they started to wash the new floor. There are two ways to summon, and the normal one thanks to gold and the premium one using gems. It goes without saying that using the summoning using the minimum currency in the game is much more efficient. Many people arrived who didn't understand where they were and what was going on. Khan refused to explain anything to the newcomers. He would only tell those scum who survived by themselves and stay away. Panic has already begun, but Isabel has asked the carpenters to come to her if any are available. She is also called the blacksmiths, tanners, and cooks but people continue to panic and resent what is happening. Apparently, Isabel has decided to divide the work among the new arrivals. Dot if the dead guys had a chance to come back now, this could be their chance. The room system is changing. The player began to form a group, which included Zid and Hanson, John and Teddy. Dot if the characters have no specialization, then they have no choice where to go and must train and those who do not have minimal skills are not worthy of being fed even items. The master has finally begun to separate the useful ones and transplants the freshly picked stars, poisoning them into the dungeon. If you can adapt, you will be thrown out. He definitely takes over the first floor. Some people have already entered the portal, but so have the first dead among them. Jenna regretted that they could not have helped the man if everything had been explained to him. But Han thought that there was no need to worry about those who died, even on the lowest floor. After a while, the second character died as well. Han hoped that at least two would return. Isabel took the second group, and they had to prepare for battle, and they were clearly not ready to fight monsters. But Aaron went out to the ferry, and said he wanted to fight monsters even though it wasn't his turn yet. Was he always like this? Han had asked Isabel to take Aaron as team leader, and it wasn't a bad idea. Han asked Aaron not to set precedents like he had, although his actions were very commendable. Jenna was hungry and wanted to go back because of that damn gambler. She hadn't eaten anything but potatoes since she got here. Han didn't realize how well Jenna understood the situation they were in. The sky was bright. It was watching them like a god watching the world, but he didn't need to worry, and he had other things to do besides listen to their thoughts. And besides, he couldn't hear them. He was sure that the player would be filtered out of their conversations and would only tell the gist. Jenna and Han were unhappy with the food. Eventually the floor was cleared and this time without death Aaron managed to kill one monster. That was great because now the guy got it. Now they could go home. They hoped that there would be something waiting for them there besides potatoes. When they got there, they saw that the building had changed a lot and became better because it was a dining room. They ate normal food until the player thought it was useless. Jenna and Aaron hoped that now they would finally eat meat, but they completely forgot about Han's words about uselessness. Dot on the table was a bowl of potatoes. There were condiments for it, but no other ingredients. Han looked at the man. His name was Dolph, and he had absolutely no skills. Dot he also didn't know how to cook at all. Dot couldn't they find someone with cooking skills? Han went to the girl Chloe. Dot. He said that from now on she would be in charge of the cooking. This meant that Dolph would be out of a job. 
Dolph realized that he was in danger of ending up as a floor sweeper, so he pleaded guilty. Han said that this was the last time he would turn a blind eye to him lying to him. After a while, there were many dishes of potatoes on the table. Chloe used different seasonings to cook the food, so even the regular potatoes were much better. Han decided to make the announcement in front of everyone now so they could pass it on to the newbies if they didn't want to watch embarrassed people die. Jenna said that she, like them, had never fought before she came here. That's why we need to work together. Enoch and Chloe won't be doing any other work. They'll be a carpenter and a cook dot they'll help them in other ways. Dahl said he could also work with wood, and Jean replied that if it's another lie, he'll be the first victim of the fusion. Civilians have a better chance of surviving, and that's true, but don't get too comfortable. There are limited spots. So if someone more gifted is called up, they'll be demoted to a fighter role. The next day, Han's routine started to change a bit. Point three young guys named Zid, Hansen, and Dick joined the training. Jenna was willing to bet that everyone else was panicking and looking for cover right now. Han was tired of fighting with Aaron, and it was a great change of scenery. Aaron set a bad example. The guys started calling him my boss too. The difference between their characteristics is about seven or eight units. It's like between a grown man and a child dot on my own. I couldn't have achieved such results in such a short time if I were on the ground. Jenna's initial archery was already at level 5, and her initial sword skills had reached level 2. Aaron's spear skills are also at level 2, but he couldn't do more than that. He is the first to come to the training ground and the last to leave. The skills are not improving effectively enough. As for those three guys, each of them had reached the first level of swordsmanship, perhaps because of their age but they were very good at it. They told him that he was incredibly strong, and Hong told them that it was because he was of a higher level that he didn't need to explain anything to them, and they would soon understand everything. They were clearly better than the other cowards. A few days later, there was a free project for ten more, and this time they didn't need to do anything. Aaron and his three took care of everything, and there was only one death. As they watched, the population was slowly growing and Hong claimed it would be even bigger. And O1 knew how many more would die and even after so much training and testing, he saw no point in telling Jenny about it and how hellishly difficult it would be to get out of this moment. The fighters were Han and Jenna, Aaron and Zid, Hansen and Diker with Enoch and Chloe as support on the fourth floor. There was a sweep and the team of fighters was facing off against the monsters. One shouldn't attack mindlessly, one should relax and act according to a strategy. The new and weak had their own methods of fighting, and one of those methods was formation. Aaron talked them through it. They should use the power of the group instead of acting individually. Han didn't participate in the battle, although he could clear the entire floor alone, and if he joined, they wouldn't be able to hone the formation. The floor was cleared, and all the new fighters got level ups, and they needed the rewards to set up life in the settlement. They don't know what quest they will get on the fifth floor, and it might be one that he can't handle by himself. The newcomers were happy to have successfully completed the quest and returned home. Jenna also admitted that everything went pretty well. The players started to connect more and more. Among the newly conscripted ten were a blacksmith and a tanner, and a workshop for creating equipment was opened. The blacksmith Tanner and Carpenter work together to make equipment. They mainly make low-ranked shields and swords. They were distributed to freshly summoned heroes, which greatly increased survivability. The core group received relatively better equipment. The three laggards were dealt with by synthesizing them. These three never showed up to the training fields and tried to find a way out day after day. Among them was Dolph, who lied about his class. A few days passed. Zito would go to the fourth floor again, and he hoped that today they would go to the fifth floor. Han also wanted to go further, and Jenna thought about it. There would be little change this time, and being calm was good, but if you relaxed too much you could lose your head. They all had to remember that they had gone through a portal and ended up in some kind of attractive, dirty place that looked like an abandoned city. Aaron told Han that there were no monsters here, but Han said, 
that they should go to the city center first and assess the situation. Everyone had to get in formation. There were no monsters to fight, no civilians, and this was definitely not a sweep. Suddenly, Zid screamed and called out to Han Dot. He saw someone's skeleton, and the team couldn't figure out where they were thrown and why. Jenna saw traces of fresh blood, and this quest was very different from the ones they had done before. Before, it was a simple warm-up. Han asked Jenna to go up to the bell tower, but she didn't see anything unusual there, just the city. But then she took a better look and hoped she was just mistaken, and she didn't tell her what she saw at first. She wanted to go down first. When she came down, she told her that the city was surrounded by a mob of goblins, and they were heading this way. There were thousands of them. This time, the mission was not a cleanup, but simple survival during the goblin attack. Aaron suggested that she might be wrong. She would like to be wrong herself. Aaron thought that maybe something had gone wrong, but Han assured him that everything would be fine, and it was easier than a cleanup. They noticed that they couldn't hide because all the doors were blocked, so they decided to keep going. They had about ten minutes left to survive the attack after meeting the enemy. Although it was unpleasant, it could be done. But if the survival quest is caught on one of the lower floors, the group will only have a 9% chance of successfully completing the task. They couldn't stay on the main road and had to run to the alleys on the upper floors. On the upper floors, this quest is not a problem, but on the lower floors it is often called the meat grinder of heroes. Zid thought they chose an unreliable place to hide, but all the buildings were damaged, so there were holes everywhere. They didn't have time to look at other places and would stick here. The passage is quite narrow, so they will take turns dealing with them. The number doesn't matter, and they must do their best. Han will hold the left passageway, Aaron the right, Zid and Hansen will cover the back, take breaks and turns, don't try to help too much. Jenna will stand in the center. She needs to save her arrows and not open fire until she gets permission from Han. They also need to build barricades before the monsters appear. Then keep in mind that if they break through, everyone will die. They have 30 minutes to prepare. This is not a waiting room. So time runs as fast as it does on the ground. Dot he started counting down on the timer. When the goblins were close, Dot he looked to the side and noticed one goblin and the timer report started. The barricade was not finished yet. Han was fighting off the goblins and they were attacking in large numbers. They realized that if they were going to create a wall of monster corpses, the monsters would attack, and it was Han's turn to fight them off. But Jenna said that if he was tired, she could take his place. But Han said that these goblins were as stupid as they looked. They needed to endure at least ten minutes to face these monsters. There were countless more of them, and he never lied to his team, and the timer showed the time. It was four more minutes. They just didn't dare to die unnecessarily, and they needed to keep the composition they came to the mission with. They continued to fight as a team. Han ordered Zid to switch places with Han Song. Even though Zid claimed that he could still stand, he had to obey Han. These guys still lacked stamina, and not only were they low level, they were also inept. They were quickly exhausted because they made many unnecessary movements and it only took one punch for them to effectively kill one after another. Using minimal force, one could stab, chop, and stab again, but these goblins were too small. They were just ground floor scum, but there were too many of them, and they seemed to have no fear, continuing to rush around as if they wanted to be killed. Han ordered the boys to switch again and called Hansen. This was the hardest and most dangerous part. Jenna had to help Zid, and collect the arrows right after the shot. She waited for him to give the order. She also had to deal with the goblins that were coming to the breach, and she understood the order. Aaron didn't understand why the battle lasted so long when it was only supposed to last ten minutes, but Han replied that it had only been five minutes. The goblins were attacking Jenna, and she was getting annoyed. Suddenly, Zid was hit and started bleeding. Khan ordered Hansen to change places with Zid, but Zid still had to fight the goblins. He started to panic, and Khan told him to stop crying. He would be healed as soon as he got back to the village, but Zed was already too scared because of his injury, 
and Khan had to do the work for two. He told him to get his act together, otherwise he would just set them down and they would die. Jenna started to stop the boys bleeding, explaining that he was setting them up for a hurrah. Hansen held his own defense and was not only tired, but his sword could no longer hold. Zed agreed to replace his friend. Hansen examined his sword, as Han assumed the weapon was a poor quality, and that was why it deteriorated so quickly. But even if he didn't have a blade, he could still wound the goblins, and if the sword didn't work, he could use the shield. Khan ordered Jenny to replace Aaron, but he also claimed that he could still hold on, but he needed to rest while he could and not be stubborn. Khan announced that there were three minutes left and they just needed to wait. This time stretched out for a very long time, and it seemed like thirty minutes in the game. They switched again. Even ten seconds was enough time to rest. Zid changed to Hansen. Khan ordered Jenny to shoot Hansen. He saw that there were almost no arrows left. They all died one way or another, and if this unit was captured, Jenna had to shoot them all. She continued to shoot at the goblins, and they noticed that Zid was mortally wounded by a goblin. Jenna killed the monster, and the guy was in a serious condition. Han also saw it and told Jenna to take the knife out of the guy, but the girl couldn't get it together and do it. Hansen asked Zid to change it up a bit. He had killed many monsters on his own. He didn't know that something was wrong with his friend, but Han asked the guy to go to the left of the aisle, and he would take care of it. Zid died, and Khan asked Jenna to leave him and continue the fight. The two of them fought monsters, gaining a new sword skill, raising it to level 3. Jenna wondered how much time was left, but Han told her to focus and fight the monsters. They had an awakening of the hero's spirit, which manifested itself in the most terrible situations. Han thought it was complete nonsense. After all, it wouldn't be necessary when they died here. Hansen was also wounded and bleeding. He begged the Calamity to save him and did not want to die. Han heard his plea for help and told Aaron and Ginny to come with him. He told the girl that she would have time to mourn for the two. Hansen also died, but Jenna already thought that they would all die here, but Khan did not want to hear that Dottie told her to climb the wall. She thought that he was suggesting that she escape alone, but Khan said that he would follow her right after. The hobbits were already here. Khan told them not to use knives. They should have been killed with just one attack, and they began to repel their attacks. Jenna was already at the top and told them to hurry. Khan started to climb the wall and Jenna gave Aaron a hand to climb as well. Suddenly, the monster grabbed Aaron's leg, and Harm got down from the wall and asked the girl not to let go of his partner. He cut off Hansen's leg, and when he did, he started bleeding and was in a serious condition, and the two of them lifted him up. The goblins had used the bodies of their relatives to climb the wall, and now they were fighting the goblins again. They could not escape from them and could not let any of them get close. If they didn't stay here, there would be nowhere to run to. Jenna had lost her spear and was only a foot away, and there were too many of them, and they couldn't hold on. There were thirty seconds left, and it seemed like an hour. They needed to hold on a little longer. The goblin reached out to Han, and he didn't even notice when the monster stabbed him with his sword. Then the monster pulled the sword out of him, and Han began to bleed. The same thing was happening to Jenny.it was the end, and they would die here on this fifth floor. It didn't make sense, and he didn't understand why he had to go through this. It would never happen on Earth. But finally he gathered his thoughts and pulled himself together. Dot he started beating the monsters again. Dot he could do it, and he had to. He was ready to fight to the death just to survive on this fifth floor. Through his willpower, Han gained skills that were frantic. It was hard to breathe. Every cell in his body hurt. But since they wanted to kill him, he had no right to let them dot. He would not lose dot. He cut the monsters to pieces until his sword shattered. Even if he lost his strength, he would not stop. Time ran out and all the monsters began to disappear, turning into ghosts. All three of them went up a level and cleared the fifth floor. Han, Jenna, and Aaron dropped their weapons 
and fell down. It was a nightmare they had to live through. Jitta started laughing and crying. She tried to get up but was completely exhausted and helped her. After everything they had been through, they returned to the reception area. If all the floors after the fifth looked the same, but this was a special floor. And if one of the team didn't do their job, everyone would have died. If Zid and Hansen had been a little stronger, they would have survived. And group survival missions are not that difficult. They were just unlucky at the most difficult moment. Jenna understood, but still couldn't hold back her tears. They left the portal, where Diker had already met them. She said that Chloe had prepared dinner and thought that Zed and Hansen had already arrived. Han told her they were dead. She didn't believe him the first time and asked again. Han repeated it. Isabel told the others to be ready to come forward if called, and Han, Jenna, and Aaron walked away. Led Lat fell down on the bed, exhausted. He did not care about the deaths he saw. He cared about the skill he had acquired. Berserker, Self-control and berserker cannot exist at the same time, because the first one helps you think reasonably in any situation, and the second one gives a significant increase in physical strength, sacrificing the mind. Probably because the guy is half a player and half a master. He didn't know much about it, but he didn't want to find out at that moment. He had a lot of problems, so it's better to rest now. Even though Jenna always came later than me, this time, she was already training hard when the guy came up and explained that she didn't want to die. The fact that the girl was talented and hardworking surprised the main character. It made him wonder if she had a new skill. Aaron also worked hard, but he didn't have any new skills during practice. Hom thought about the fact that his development cost was fixed at 5 o'clock, which was the growth rate of a 3-star character. The thought that he was approaching the maximum level for a character with one star and would soon get a second was interrupted by Jenna. She became too curious about the guy's body. The object of such scrutiny did not like the ABS. Failing to comply with the request to remove her hand, Jenna received a physical warning. I yelled it was surprised at how quickly Jenna was recovering from yesterday, and the girl was worried that Aaron hadn't come out. He was always early, just like Dick. They trained very hard, unlike the others who were driven by fear of the fusion. They would have given up everything to avoid it. The boys said that Hyde and Hansen had good potential, and it would be better if those who did nothing at all died instead. This kind of talk made Jenna uncomfortable, so she suggested that they go back to training. The conversation was interrupted by Aaron, who came up behind them, apologizing for being late, his expression speaking for him. Blaming himself for what happened to these two, Dot Han expressed his rather harsh but realistic position that they were just weak and lost their lives because of it. A month had passed since the protagonist had been in this world, but only ten days in the real world. The guy watched enough to realize how often you enter the game. It happens in the morning, and noon and in the evening. As it turned out, the time in the battle stages corresponds to the real one. Otherwise, he would have to survive three times longer, which would no doubt lead to the death of everyone. Ezel praised Han a lot, which raised questions from Jenna. The fairy was in a bad mood because of the incomplete investment in the work, and I slapped through in a few words in defense of the companions, because they would come to the task Isis should call them. A fourth group was formed, consisting of Khan, Jenna, Louis, Joffrey, and Owen. Jenna was nervous because she hadn't even met before, but her boyfriend reassured her that it would be easier this time. When the team arrived at the space-time abyss, the daytime dungeon was already open. One of the teammates asked Han if they would really fight with them. It was Owen, and he was well aware that they would not help the stronger players, to which the brunette replied that no one would have to fight. The group went into the dungeon. The task was to gather resources and return. Jenna was tense. She was already waiting for enemies. Khan tried to distract the girl by being naughty, and then explained how to collect resources. Just move everything useful to the glowing space. Just like a shopping cart, you need to fill the storage to make something useful from the right materials. This news made the group very happy. Is it really just a simple collection of resources without fighting? 
But Han has other plans for Jenna. They go hunting, and the girl is very happy. They haven't eaten meat for a long time. The guys, who were hiding in the bushes because of an ambush, spotted a deer. Jenna took up the task with a twinkle in her eye. She had seen her father do it many times, so it was nothing for her. Her knowledge in this matter is deep and con, in turn, ordered to put all the useful things in the spatial window, and was going somewhere. The girl asked where, but the guy did not answer. He only advised to continue hunting so as not to eat potatoes for all meals. There was half an hour left. Most likely, after the time was up, they would all be automatically returned. There were amazing animals at the watering hole on the picturesque shore. One of them is the Queen of the Forest, a rare monster found in this dungeon. From her, you can get a low-rank attribute stone that helps development. Iceland rushed out of the ambush and easily dealt with ordinary monsters. Swinging his sword without difficulty, Han came face to face with the Queen of the Forest. The monster was furious at the boy's audacity, and the Queen had already challenged the creature to a fight a little later in the forest. Two of the group noticed that the monster had panicked, but in vain. It was a con dot he had come from hunting over the head of the Queen of the Forest to the ground. The size of the beast's body part surprised Jenna. How could a deer be so big? But Ice Lad doesn't care about explaining the animal's anatomy. Dot he is very tired and asks the girl to finally help. While discussing the amount of prey and the fact that there is enough meat for everyone, Jenna poured the queen of the forest's blood into the spatial window. The girl was confused by the fact that Han brought the head because it tasted terrible and the boy brought it not for food but because it was impossible to separate the animal's horn from the skull without tools. Jenna came to the conclusion that the killed animal was a female. The hunter knows how to determine the sex of an animal by the shape of its head because it has lived in the forest for a long time. At the same moment, she awakened the skilled forest hunter Han recognized that it would not be a problem for her to reach the next level. He was holding a low-ranked elemental windstone which can be used to improve the abilities of heroes and create items from the dungeon. Thanks to the heroes, the table was set with meat. Jenna was happy about it, but the whore was not happy about it. Again, Dottie called the girl with him. According to the days today, the Plateau Cinema was available from the daily dungeons. There you can get other elemental stones. The girl and the boy went inside. The former couldn't believe that they could really become stronger just by mining resources. There was a beautiful view. Nature whispered about peace. Han's eyes were drawn to the red plants, the flowers of life. They are the key ingredient needed to make healing potions. But he decided to pick them later. In addition to enjoying the scenery, the boys hunted wolves with arrows and swords. Their physical fitness and excellent agility helped. It was not too difficult. Jenny had to hurry up with cutting up the animal because the other wolves could smell the blood in their efforts. They got a low-ranked water stone. As Jenna made it by hand, she thought about how beautiful it was here. She wanted to keep it that way. Only hunting and gathering herbs, having enough food and a place to sleep, and not having a wizard could help. Shkoda's heart ached because he was a master too. And didn't everyone in Niflheim think the same way? Didn't Jenna just not want to fight? But not everything here is about fighting, and the girl doesn't need to worry about being used as a sacrifice in a fusion chamber. During the conversation, it turns out that the guy will send the girl there if there are stronger heroes. Jenna asks him why he doesn't go there himself. His exhaled laugh shows that Khan was only amused by this provocation. A few days later, the group went on an exploration. The goal was to explore a new place. Diker joined the team. Today, he was full of energy and ready for teamwork. It wasn't an everyday dungeon, and the guys hadn't encountered an exploration-type mission yet. There were no enemies anywhere. It was like a trap. Just like on the fifth floor, Khan ordered everyone to duck and keep quiet. The team obviously didn't understand the words. They meant to find a place to hide, not to fall to the ground. The blonde was very nervous. Late, I assured Aaron that there would be no danger like on the fifth floor. 
They only needed to fulfill certain requirements to close the floor safely. There were already three goblins ahead of them. Such a small number of opponents made them wonder if any of them had a signal horn. It could call for help, and the suspicions were justified. Jenna saw a whole village ahead. There are about 100 monsters there. It's worth thinking about how to deal with them, dividing the roles and goblins among themselves. Only Dick didn't hit the target. He has to stay in reserve for now. Jenna's arrow did not disappoint the hunter, and hit the target minus one Aaron did not do worse with the spear dot he quickly dealt with the second. The goblin with the horn tried to call for help, but Han couldn't let that happen with his sword dot he interrupted the signal. The stage was cleared and Han became the best player. The reward was received, but it was over? That's what the team members were wondering. But it's not over yet. Brunei decides to leave, and while there is still time goes to look around. Since missions of this level are now available, nothing will end there, and therefore it is better to try to guess what will happen next to get a hint, and not look at the random drops of tasks ahead of the fortified goblin village. One of the monster guards spotted Han from behind a tree, but the guy managed to get out. I slapped him and told his group that he just wanted to look around. Han realized that the quest chains had begun, and it was important to understand the clues to be ready for anything. The brunette is annoyed that she doesn't know if anyone has seen anything they've had to see. Thoughts that things are moving too fast because the quest chains are supposed to appear later. Chloe interrupted with the news that they're in trouble. The fact is that some strange people have arrived. Khan didn't pay much attention to it. Residents face this every day, but the interlocutor managed to convince him with the argument that they already have weapons and there is definitely something wrong with them. These are high-ranking heroes. This group of mercenaries are lone wolves. There is a strong bond between them. This is because they have been called in several times in a row. Their cases will be more effective if they work together. The master bought a special package for the newcomers, which contained 2,500 gems and 50,000 gold. Han ordered the girl to return to the kitchen. These people did not pose a danger to her group. He noted that the arrival of the newcomers had not changed anything. A beautiful dark-haired girl stood against the wall, her face reflecting indifference, but she was clearly absorbed in her own thoughts. The mysterious lady was a close-minded woman, and Jenna was not happy about it. She insisted on recognizing the new face among her old friends. The brunette's name was Edie's Cullen. Excited to meet her, the girl began to introduce Khan and clearly said too much in her description of him. Edie's is a three-star hero. She is good with a dagger, has basic archery skills and agile movements, but not the greatest strength to match her class a thief. The guy invites his new friend for a personal conversation, and during the conversation, the characters share their knowledge of this place. Addis doesn't remember how she got here. The only thing she knows is that the purpose of her arrival here is to fight. When they talk about the girl's knowledge of fusion, she says that the way to become stronger is to sacrifice others. Ham concludes that their memories are highly dependent on rank when they are called upon, and Cullen is a mercenary and part of the puny wolves, a group named Jenna is excited about. She thinks it sounds really cool. The newly arrived girl admits that she doesn't remember how she got here. She seems to be very skilled, even compared to other mercenaries. Jenna continued to comment enthusiastically on everything I.D. said. Suddenly, the discussion was interrupted by the call of the brunette and her friends to the square. The huge, strong man Yakin had his lunch interrupted, but the desire to see the master cheered him up. The newcomers left, and Chloe ran up to Jenny to complain about the giant, because the meat he had eaten was enough for five people. She insisted that he be forced to give up the food, but Han ignored her insolence and suggested that they go to the square. A group of punishing wolves was formed, which included Avent, a man with long gray hair and a scar over his left eye, who was appointed leader of the group. Jacqueline, a blonde big man who looks like a wave of Viking, a guy with short dark hair and a caustic smile on his face, combines a guy with white skin, pupilless eyes and Edie's, who was familiar to the heroes. 
one of the crowd of onlookers was hysterical. Because they were not like everyone else, they had weapons in their hands and looked bad. Ishal pushes the group to act, because the owner is waiting for them. Jetta recognizes that he looks good in contrast to the others, and the others express their desire to need protection from Khan. He wasn't interested in free work, and the weaklings who asked for help were lazy, while demanding protection from those who were stronger than them was useless because they hadn't even tried to train. Such arguments tense people up. The lances that were just trying to avoid merging were met with a rather rude rejection, and the people who had recently asked for protection were rushed. Aaron didn't understand why he couldn't feel sorry for them, but Han explained that while the blonde lay bleeding to death with her leg cut off, the bastards were relaxing. Decca had recently had a fight with someone. His face was scarred with no living spots. As it turned out, it was a duel with Aaron, and, judging by the guy's honesty, the last one. Khan advised the boys to rest. While Jenna stood around, eavesdropping on this conversation, the group of punishing wolves returned quite quickly. This task seemed too easy for them, purely as a warm-up with cold, penetrating looks. Avant asked who was sitting in front of him. Khan said with a sly smile that it was none of his business. Jenna's tone didn't sit well with the group either, although they were the first to speak too arrogantly. The first to introduce himself was the captain of the mercenary squad, which prompted Eslaw to give his name as well. Suspicion of mercenarism fell on the protagonist because he also had a gun, a mistaken belief because the guy was a simple farmer. Khan's early work surprised Avant, but the man was distracted by a question about the people they met. Did they live in this place? At the same moment, the master made ten more consecutive calls. The merging process was started. Time to choose the heroes who would become victims. Isis was going crazy. A bunch of aliens arrived to take their place. The fairy merged the sentence of several guys on the orders of the master. Yakin didn't show any mercy to those who tried to resist. He dragged them to their own demise. Jenna and Han couldn't believe that the aliens who had just arrived were already being sent to fusion and Avant was only encouraging such actions. Treating them like garbage, and using his physical superiority, Jakeen dragged the aliens into the fusion chamber. The girl could not help but be disturbed by such a rude attitude towards people. They were not even given a chance. Which must be a big mistake. Yes, it is very rare to find talented characters among the characters of a single star, but he doesn't even try to test their capabilities. Meanwhile, the big guy's level was rising due to barbaric actions. New names are being announced. Of course, the convicts don't want to be fissile material. The wolves are not interested. They are ready to drag them in. The only one who is in no hurry to follow orders. She is, but she has no choice, and it seems like an order. Khan asks Isil to send a message to the owner so that he comes to his senses. You can lose useful old no-star characters. Yakin is uncomfortable with taking such interfering orders from the brunette, but he doesn't seem to be intimidated. Islat speaks in a rather provocative way that carries the giant's intention to destroy the guy who gets in the way. He swings in readiness to destroy the impudent man, but no luck. The arrow missed him. This is Jenna and her warning shot. The next one will be right on target. Avad is in a bad mood, because of this insolence. No one has ever dared to raise a weapon against them. I just tried to calm the leader and avoid conflict, but they didn't hear me. The sword pointed at the Khan said one thing. There would be no peaceful conversation. Islet pointed to the group that created the anarchy and lynching, calling them trash. The easel ordered the fight to stop immediately, unless they wanted the master to drop his card on them. But it seemed that the fight between the heroes was not forbidden. Harm reveals the wolf's cards. They are just a band of thieves, not mercenaries. The revelation that finally enraged Avant. Islet explains to Isis that not all the heroes who come here have unacceptable behavior, and that these people will only be a danger to the base. Tom challenges Avant to a duel to resolve the contradiction between the heroes. The protagonist's actions are incomprehensible to him, what their group did to him. The brunette lays it all out. 
The reason why Evan asks about the people who have been living here since they arrived from the rift is to explore the land. Is there anyone stronger, and can they start to make their own order on the base? The wolves will sacrifice the stronger heroes, because they don't have enough weak ones. The terms of the fight. How simple dot if Khan wins, Avant will be the victim of a merger. If he wins, it will be the other way around. The head of the warring group is annoyed by this, and seems to accept the duel. The challenge is cancelled by shock. He gets scared and can't let any of the strong heroes go to the merge. Khan orders Jinny to take them in and place them in the barracks, and to leave the place of the upcoming battle. The girl asks if she should leave the bar. He assures her that he is confident in his abilities the task is repeated. The parties agree to a duel. The fight will end if one of the opponents surrenders. Avant Khan will not be killed, only used for merging. Stankaby is worried about the brunette. But the guy assures him that everything will be fine and asks him to make sure that no one interferes with their fight. But there's no time to talk. Avant is about to attack, realizing that his opponent has good potential, and he is only level 2, but his strength characteristics are already approaching 20, in addition to his basic level 3 fencing skill. He has no right to be proud with such a level difference. The guy goes into a frenzy. Strength and agility increase by 5, and intelligence decreases by 10. He manages to dodge the attack and get behind his opponent's back. He grabs and slams Avant face first into the floor, punching through the stonework. He pulls out his sword from behind his back and stabs his opponent so that it will hurt him more if he tries to move. Avant is ready to say the phrase defeat.to admit defeat and isolate requires saying it clearly and loudly. Suddenly, others from the walls intervene, demanding that the commander be left alone. They have already lost. Khan is driven by revenge against those who these bastards led into his synthesis. Dot he is not going to let his opponent go. The guy doesn't let Avant finish the sentence that could save him from torment, because now he's the protagonist's victim. He advises the rest of the wolves not to interfere, because the martyr himself agreed to the duel and now it's up to Islet to decide whether he dies or not. And now, it is up to Islet to decide whether he will die or not. Bane tries to be threatening, and asks if the enemy knows who their leader is. And Khan asks if they are mercenaries, and then asks I.D. personally the same question that the girl admits they used to be, but not now. The brunette ends up saying that they are just thieves, and to call a spade a spade. He asks why the young lady is with them. And he says it's because of her father, but the man interrupts her and asks her to think and make a choice, whether she will stay with the wolves or join him. Jacqueline is furious at the brazen attempt to lure an ally to his side. Meanwhile, Alvin tries to reach for his weapon, his only chance to resist, but the harm pins him harder to the stone floor, showing Edie's what will happen to them all. The big man tries to convey that the girl will pay dearly for her betrayal, but it's up to her. She is facing a difficult choice, and it seems that she has made it. Edie's takes Khan's side, putting an end to her relationship with her former classmates. Yvonne tries once again to say that he surrenders, but Islet assures his opponent that he did not try to fight in vain because he will be immediately released into the fusion. But the hostage makes the mistake of threatening. Suddenly, the wolves rush to the jewel, and Isis stands in their way, reminding them that, until the fight is over, they have no right to interfere. Of course, this doesn't stop the fierce, impudent wolves, and they despise the fairy. Khan rejoices, and for good reason, but the little girl with wings is furious, and the wolves are torn apart. This is it. The Iseli force, and finally Avant surrender. Khan comes out of berserker mode, his head is cracking and he decides to use this power only in real combat. The master is trying to do something on the screen. Most likely, he's trying to cancel the fight, but if he wanted to see what would happen and then stop the fight, he shouldn't have agreed. It seems he didn't know about the dual mode at all. Harm gains a level of basic shield and sword proficiency and improves his resistance to pain. Isil is worried that the master will leave because he couldn't use high-ranked heroes. Sledge convinces him 
that if he wanted to quit, he would have done so. As soon as a four-star character joined him, the guy reached the maximum level. It's time to increase his fame, which can be done by using a progress stone or sacrificing a hero of the same level in fame. Khan realizes that the master made a mistake by sending 10 characters exclusively for fusion as a bargaining chip, but standing over the corpses of his recent opponents, he realizes that he did the right thing, otherwise the base would be a living hell. Eyelight knows his worth, so he doesn't understand how the master could have sent him as a fusion victim, since he can't conquer the tower that way. He challenges him to be the one to send him to fusion. A little later, Han enters the building. The rowdy crowd greets the evil with smiles and shock, and he realizes who he is talking about. He grabs Jenna by the cheek for telling them what happened. He told her to keep her mouth shut. The others tried to get close to him, but he remains indifferent, saying that he only saved the newcomers and it was none of their business. Then he says with a smile that the owner seems to be angry and calls out a few names. Lewis and Joffrey, Owen and Audio, Arnold and Duncan. Jenna tells Han that only five people are needed for the group and asks why the six were called in. Han countered with a question, but then said they were needed for the synthesis. Realizing that this is for fusion, they panic and ask why they were trying anyway. Khan rudely interrupts them, asking Aaron and Dick if they really tried when everyone was training in the sweat of their brow, which the two did, then turned to Jenny and asked if they had ever helped Jenny on a hunt. The girl hesitated and barely remembered that they sometimes transported the meat she had collected. Han again addressed the crowd and said that their lives were not worth more than cattle. One man is furious at what he heard and is ready to teach Han a lesson. But then he is kicked in the face and an angry fairy flies over, annoyed that she is not being heard, and reminds them again to go to the square and not to make her angry. The crowd called out for Han's help because the master must listen to him. Khan and Jenna ignored them. They continued their conversation. Jenna asked Khan who they were all going to go to, and he said he thought it would be the Whirlpools. She was new and her level was quite low. The six couldn't beg for mercy and went to the square. There, all six are used for synthesis, all of them evaporating in the bright light. As a result, Alice Colleen is promoted to three stars and receives a new skill trap. Disarmament. Khan then tells them not to think about running away from work. No one cares about them, and no one will protect them, and if they want to survive, they have to prove themselves. The crowd was shocked by what they heard. Some were furious, others were afraid, and did not believe themselves, saying that they did not know how to fight, and had no choice but to die. Khan calls out four names, Chloe and our Coulter and Patrick, and tells them that if anyone wants to learn their craft, let them help. The man says that learning blacksmithing from scratch is quite difficult, but Han interrupts him. He understands him, and says that these people are already motivated enough. And then he offers to teach them close combat skills. But his methods are quite harsh, and Jenna offered them lessons. She will teach them how to hunt and cut prey, and Enoch will teach them carpentry. They have many ways to survive, if they just want to try. Jenna noticed that Ha was kind because he told them everything in detail, and Han thought she was right. If they listened to him, they could avoid death. Today's merger was a whim of someone who needed to blow off steam. The situation with a decent merger of heroes could happen again. They were close to the soft floor. They would need a second group, but not just a group of people, but a real team capable of competing with the main one. The next day, the girl was holding freshly sliced bread and greeting Han. The boy asked what it was. Since they didn't have any flour to save it, the girl smiled and said they used ground potatoes. Chloe tells him that the woman was a baker, and Khan praises them for eating a varied diet, reducing stress, and tells him where to get the wheat. On his way out, he comes across the vortexes and takes her with him to the training arena. Once there, they meet Jenna, who is honing her archery skills. Han offers Jenna a spa with vortexes and daggers. Despite the fact that Jenna is only good with a bow, she picks up the daggers. 
The fight begins. Both girls have shown themselves well. They are skillfully dodging blows and moving quite quickly. Addis is shocked by the child's strength, and Jenna replies that she is old enough and flies straight at the girl, who barely has time to dodge. But she quickly comes to her senses and shows her punch, and Jenna is waiting for her attack. The whole arena is covered in clouds of dust, and when they disappear, we see Eddie breathing heavily. After the fight, Jenna pulls a knife on her, and she asks if they were once mercenaries or came from a family of famous warriors. But Jenna tells her that she's just Hunter's daughter, and they weren't like that from the beginning. They only got stronger after training here. And Han adds that although she's weaker now, her skills and growth rate are much better than the one-star heroes, and she can match them when she's promoted. And then he added that it all depends on her efforts. If she trained and didn't relax on the training field, no matter who she was before, the girl smiled and said she would remember that there were a lot of newcomers in the training arena today. Was it because of yesterday's performance at Fusion? There were many times more of them, and they worked very hard. Although it was not a matter of personal choice, they would have to raise their own importance to survive. Harm looked at them and thought that there were too few of them, but fewer than there should be. Even if the others wanted to go to support, there would only be two spots left, and someone would be unlucky to go to fusion. A guy who was training caught his attention. He called him over and asked his name. The guy introduced himself as Asher Roderick and told him that they were called here by some creature who called himself the master and forced them to fight. Khan noticed that Asher was in good shape and asked him who he was before he came here. He said that he was a porter for mercenaries, carrying their belongings, standing guard and setting up camp. The Khan praised the boy and said that it would be a good idea to become a mercenary in the future. Han smiled. He pulled out his training sword and told him to attack to see what he could do. That night, the selection of new recruits began. The master did not care who wanted to be a pillar and who did not. Despite the fact that Aaron was constantly participating in battles, he was not chosen to level up, and two people died. These people were used for fusion, and Asher was strengthened. He rose to level three. The rest were sent to the daytime dungeon, and the mine from which the fire attribute stone can be obtained is still closed the next day. Early in the morning, Han gathered the team in the training arena, and they wondered why they were woken up. Han asked Jenna to be quiet and asked everyone to guess why they were here. The crowd hesitated, and after a while, Dick's hand went up and suggested that they gather here to choose the members of the group. Jenna was stunned and asked if it wasn't the host's call, and Han replied that he could advise him on the options, and he was unlikely to refuse. He put his hand on the glass and said it was time to start. The crowd looked around, not understanding what he meant. Khan raised his glass and said that they would be drawn by lot. They are divided into two groups. There are six of them, so three people per team. He added that they shouldn't worry. There will be no losers. It's just a training session. Each group will have a leader. One group will be Han, the other Eddie. The girl didn't expect that from him and said she thought Jenna would be the second leader. Han said he couldn't handle it, but Jenna was furious with his decision because she thought she was as good as Eddie. The girl asked why they had to split up, and Han said it was dangerous to focus on the growth of only one group, and if it was destroyed, there would be huge problems. Jenna said that they didn't have enough people, to which Jenna replied that the master would allocate the remaining places himself. The fifth floor was a good example. The difference in ability was too great. A couple of people behind almost killed the whole group. If all floors could be cleared by one, there would be no point in doing it in groups. But soon the number of people needed to clean up will start to grow, including in special buildings where dozens or hundreds of heroes can participate at the same time and cause trouble if there is someone weak among them. And the second group will become insurance for the settlement in case the first group is destroyed. Anything summons heroes for real money without any sense. But there are some subtleties here, 
and one can only hope that he can figure it out. Ham continued to divide the guys into groups. The Reds would go to his team, and the Blues would go with Eddie's. Their groups will be equal, so don't let them get upset if they end up in the wrong one. Ham put the glass with the tokens on the floor and said it was time to start. They took turns drawing them. Jenna got a red lot, and she was happy about it. Aaron also got a red one. The others were clear. They had blue ones, and by the look on their faces, you could tell they didn't believe in whirlpools. Aaron tried to explain, but Han interrupted him and said she understood. She was new and inexperienced. Their reaction was obvious. Han thought it was clear to everyone that their fighting skills were at different levels, but they couldn't do anything about it yet. He struck an epic pose and turned to Eddie's. They had better catch up quickly if they didn't want to be left behind. Addis replied that she knew what to do, and it was clear. After yesterday's merger, they had no chance of losing. Outside, it was pouring rain and a violent thunderstorm. The hobbits were looking at their victims and drooling. This is the seventh floor. The type of task is a sweep. The goal is to destroy all the enemies, namely the level 8 goblins out of 13 monsters. The goblins surrounded the trio. Han, Jenna, and Aaron were ready for battle and prepared their weapons. Diker shouted that they were lucky and he would handle it. Han drew his sword and told them not to interfere. Dot he would handle it himself. The goblin squealed and rushed at the hero. Han was breathing heavily. Dot he was preparing to switch to bow in furious mode. He mercilessly cut down the goblins one for one, their pieces flying in all directions, and then only one was left. Dot he was shaking with fear, but Han stabbed his sword behind his back. Jenna asked if they should finish him off, but Han said they should leave him alone. One goblin wouldn't do anything to them anyway, and they had to go exploring. There should be keys to the stream on this floor. It was best not to complete the task yet. They had a lot on their way. First, there was rain. Second, there was a river. And third, there was a dam that was broken. But still, they completed the mission. The floor was cleared, Aaron leveled up, and Han became the most valuable hero. ASA reward. They received 10,000 gold coins, two iron or C, and one C skin. They exited the portal. Jenna ran after Han and asked if they were done for the day because she wanted to clean up. Han said she could do whatever she wanted and asked Aaron what he planned to do. Aaron was about to go to the training arena and then Han had something in mind and asked Aaron to stay. The system informs them that they can choose a double rookie kit which includes 5,000 crystals, 100,000 gold, and will cost 90. 001. This will be the third purchase from the Atnahan called Jenna for pulling lots from a glass on the table, and Aaron was asked to bring vortexes. Han proceeded with the purchase and the payment was completed. The wizard started a high rank challenge. The system asked if they were going to complete two high rank challenges. For this, the system asks for 1,000 crystals. Some speculated that this was expected. He is the kind of person who usually doesn't buy anything but can't stop. When he first signed up, he was impressed with the level of artificial intelligence, and he had a lot of fun watching the characters. New users were attracted by the merging system, the fights while sweeping the floor, and the behavior of the characters. Watching live people was a lot of fun. Even the actions of the support heroes attract attention. It is the execution of their orders and instructions, strategy, and various tactics of battles with other players, and as the difficulty increases, more and more new content is revealed. No wonder the masters like to control other people's lives. Master and Eating started a high rank challenge, and now we will find out who will show up. This time, Master and Eating gets two rare three-star heroes named Joker and Roderick. Knight asked the girl who she was. Jenna came and brought lots. She asked who the girl on the ground was and told her to ignore her and noticed that the girl was wearing uncomfortable clothes that were more embarrassing than painful. Eddie sneaked up and said she was an aristocrat. But what was she doing here? Eddie's has been a mercenary for a long time. She can't even stand up out of shame. It was a sunny and warm day outside. 
Roderick understood the concept of summoning a master in fusion, but he didn't know much about levels and skills. He was a security guard for a big city and seemed like a normal person if you forget the extreme sense of duty. Roderick had the feeling that he was under hypnosis, as if there was an enemy he needed to fight. Khan said that the man was right and he would explain everything. After the draw, he and Edith drew lots. Blue would take the old man, Ed the girl. There was little choice. A veteran guard with vast experience and a young aristocratic girl, obviously. Who would be better? Khan ordered Jenna to bring the lot. She answered instantly, but because she was running, the lot started flying out of the glass. And it was obvious that the right would be red. But not only Khan saw it, but Edith did too. Jenna put the glass down and said they could choose. Han reacted instantly to get ahead of his opponent. He wants the lefty. He wants a veteran warrior, not a simple red-haired girl. And then a fireball flew over Khan, and he realized who he wanted. But Addis also grabbed the red lot. She too saw the magic. Yoko, Ravel Strano did have a mage class. The girl had three stars, and a first level, strength and agility were at level 7, intelligence 31, health 8 o'clock, and had advanced fire magic as a rookie. At level 2, Han and Eddie couldn't share the red lot. The girl suggested the guy be a gentleman, her group just doesn't have enough mage for balance. But it's a pity that Han is not a gentleman at all, and his team needs a mage more. Because bow and fire magic go together perfectly. Warriors, thieves, and other classes can be obtained in a huge number of ways, but mages are a completely different story. They are very rare and can only be obtained during a challenge for donations, but even then the chances are extremely low. The mage girl saw the color of the lots and asked what they were doing and looked at her like a criminal. Jenna wasn't happy either. She thought it was a cheat. These things depend on luck, and you have to mix a lot. The girl didn't understand how she was supposed to understand anything if everything happened so suddenly. Roderick suggested that she think hard, and the girl tensed up. She understood, and thought it was disgusting that they were disposing of people like that. Jenna mixed the lots and put them in front of them, saying that this time no one should cheat. Everything had to be for good luck and fair play. Hoon decided he would go first, and Eddie's didn't object. The boy reached for the glass and the girl did the same. They stood there, looking at the papers, and it was already clear who was getting what. Hoon knew he would get the red lot and Eddie's would get the blue. The Joker was in Hoon's group and Roderick was in Eddie's group, and they accepted the offer. The fairy dragged the boy who did not want to go with her, and shouted that Khan had promised them that they would not be harmed if they worked hard. Very Easel ordered him to shut up and told Yoka to follow her, which scared the girl. Han told her to obey her if she didn't want to end up in that man's place. The fusion was complete. Yawn and Zenith evaporated in a bright light, and Joker raised her level. Han told the girl that she would also go to fusion if she didn't make it in time. It was impossible to avoid the synthesis, so it was better not to get to that point and work hard. The guys asked for help. Han said they were the material for the synthesis and Roderick was next. The synthesis was completed. Roderick renewed himself, Isil danced and ordered to open the rift of space and time. The Joker wanted to say something, but Han interrupted her saying that this is a test for beginners. The fairy told the second group to enter the rift. Edith will guide Roderick. He will be the main character of this battle, and they entered the portal. Khan asked the girl what magic she had, and she reluctantly asked why he should know. But Khan stood his ground and asked her to answer the question because she would have to fight. The girl wondered why she was here. Khan asked her why she was not given the information because all heroes with three stars should have basic information. Ioka was disgusted that she would have to fight strange creatures for no reason. Han said that no reason was needed. If the girl did not obey, she would simply be sacrificed. Han in a cold pose asked again what magic she possessed, and the girl said that fire magic and the strongest thing she could create was his third circle flame. Han said that he had already seen it, and asked what else she could do if she could teleport or had support magic. The girl smiled. 
because even a mage with three runes could learn support, then turned to Han and said that he was impressed with her abilities and that support magic would never work on her. Han marveled at the girl's arrogance and hoped that her strength was at the same level. Unlike attack and defense, the system here is more universal. The girl didn't have a skill window, and there was a chance that they would be woken up, but it was hard to believe, although it was good that she was at least a mage. Khan told the girl that from now on she was on their team, and she would have to fight them, and the girl understood, although she did not like it. Then Khan asked her if she had experience fighting monsters, and of course she did. She was even nicknamed the Witch of Revel. Meanwhile, the second group had already returned to the test. They went to the floor below, and judging by the look on Addis's face, Roderick was stronger than she expected. Khan called the team. Now it was their turn, and the first group was going into the rift of time and space. After entering the rift of space and time, the first group needs to go to the top of the tower and save the world point seven floors have already been given up. Han assumed that they would go to the fourth floor. The next stage up the floor was not yet available, and if they wanted to test the magic, the fourth floor would suffice. There were only harpies and goblins there. Han just needed to find out what kind of mage she was. Han suggested that they stand aside during the battle because they needed to test her skills. This made the girl very angry. She didn't understand what they wanted from her. Han said .it would be easy for her. Each of them could handle the fourth floor by themselves, and that was because the Joker doubted herself because of her low level. Even though the girl had recently said that she would impress everyone with her magical prowess, the Joker believed that she was special, and it would take a little longer to see. The same easel gave a push and everything was ready to begin. She wished the home good luck. The group went through the teleport door, and suddenly they were on the 88th floor, even though they wanted to go to the 4th floor. The group huddled together, and was given the command to draw their weapons and focus. The master seems to be angry because of the event that happened earlier, greedy because of the fusion of one with the three stars. He wants to crush them as much as possible. Or he hints that the fourth floor is very boring for a test. Jenna noticed something familiar in the distance. Han immediately turned around and yelled for everyone to get down. The Joker didn't understand what was going on, although she should have listened to her commander's order. Khan flew at her and put her on the ground. IT was a goblin arrow, and that's where it all started. IT was the eighth floor with a conquest mission, and the goal was to kill 27 level 9 goblin riders. There was a whole cavalry moving towards our heroes. Jenna spared no arrows, firing them with lightning speed one after another and hitting the target with surgical precision. The ground was uneven, but there was nowhere to run. The enemies were already ahead. Aaron received an order. When the goblins got to them, he was to quickly circle around and attack them from the side. Ham continued to give orders. Just as he was about to say something to Yoka, he looked back. It was a goblin arrow, which he instantly closed himself against with his shield. Han barely made it. They were already close. Just when Han thought he was in trouble, a goblin rider with karma appears behind him, ready to kill. Han immediately dodges. Bending down, he quickly draws his sword and cuts the creature in half. Only the wolf survives. But it doesn't end there. Dot he is caught off guard. Again and again a goblin comes from behind with an attack of rats. Dot a second one is close by. Khan also bends down. But this time, he is attacked by a goblin riding a wolf. Han blocks the attack and calls Aaron for help. The boy instantly saves the commander. Dot he destroys the goblin with his spear. But the second goblin had a crossbow and was ready to shoot at Khan and take revenge for his own. But Khan hides behind his shield and orders Yoke to cast a spell. Yoke is confused and does not understand anything. Khan repeats the order to her again, but the girl needs time. A minute into it. But they do not have time. A goblin with a sword flies at Khan again, and the boy again asks the girl to use magic, but he still manages it himself. He strikes with lightning speed and cuts the creature to pieces. Joka closed her eyes. She concentrates the sounds of spells. La Grand Seduce. The girl is surrounded by magical symbols, and a fireball is created in her hands. Khan defends himself 
with a shield. The goblins can't win in close combat, so they shoot at the group with crossbows and bows. Aaron was ordered to protect Jenna from arrows, so she focused on shooting, and he does a great job. Meanwhile, Yoka has already created enough magic, and it's time for her to show what she can do as a mob of goblins are flying at her. It looks like they want to kill the mage first. Hom can cancel them out for a while, but it's going to be hard to deal with them all, and we're going to need the magic shield. Han is attacked again by a goblin riding a wolf, and he shields himself. Joker needs Joker to hit shields, but the mage girl doesn't seem to hear him. She's focused on herself, and her power is growing. Jenna warns Han not to stand near the mage, because he might be hit by a magical attack. Han can't believe his eyes. It's time to forget about the barrier. She can't even cast magic in motion. The goblins are pretty close to Ioka, but she's not ready to attack yet. It's time though, because there won't be a chance. And here we see the stats of Ioka's opponent straighter. Again, nothing has changed except that it was the second level. The wolf's mouth is wide open, drooling, ready to claw at the victim. He flies at Han, shield and claws at him but he can't stand firmly and steadily on his feet. And at the right moment, he hits the wolf right in the face, depriving him of several teeth and his lower jaw. But it's not just the wolf that's in trouble. A goblin rider attacks our hero, but he instantly ducks and prepares his sword for the creature. The sword hits the target with great force, and the goblin loses its head, but the wolf only enraged him. But Han also knew what to do with it. A few blows turn the wolf into mince meat, and its head also flies off, just like its master's. But then Yoka catches his eye, the girl is just preparing to attack, but not the goblin's point. One of them swings a sword and flies at the magician. The sword is already at the girl's head, and she seemed to be finished. But Han saves the girl at the last moment, and the goblin's blow misses the target. This time Yoka was lucky that Han was there. The girl is angry with the guy. She doesn't like what he did, but Han thinks she's stupid because no one sorcered without using some kind of defense. But the girl insisted on her way because she used a huge amount of manners and firepower, which should have impressed him. But Han didn't care. He ordered them to retreat to the nearby forest. Jenna didn't understand how they could get there, because the forest had just been blocked off, but they had to go somewhere. So they kept running. Khan grabbed his arm. After all, she had to run faster. She should have been able to do her magic when the goblins were around. They were not backing away from the heroes. They were getting angrier, and it seemed that they were not shrinking. They were now at the viscous field that connected the forest and the plain. Yoga should have already begun. But of course she does not like this attitude. But Khan does not like that she does not follow orders. He pushes her in front of him, and she flies to her destination. After all, no one will treat her badly if she is dead. And Khan himself stopped. He ordered them to go ahead. He would join later. The boy's eyes turned red, his teeth sharper and bigger. Khan entered a state of madness. He grabbed his sword and shield. The boy is ready to meet the goblin horde. This was his second transformation into a berserker today. Even though he is tired, he still needs to buy time. The goblins are already here. Point one of them is already preparing a crossbow, but the arrow hits his shield. The goblin rider is already flying with his sword at our hero, and his wolf is furious. He can't wait to sink his teeth into the human body. Khan didn't expect such speed, and the goblin attacks in the hope of finishing off the hero, but Carl dodges the blow but there is no time to attack. Arrows are already flying at him, and he must run away from them. Khan barely dodges and realizes that the other side is already attacking, choosing the tactic of hitting and then running away and repeating. The goblin is already coming at the boy with great speed. He aims his spear at it, but Khan will not give up so easily. He pushes off and flies at the goblins. He instantly kills a couple of goblins and wolves. They fly into thousands of pieces. The boy deprives them of the mobility they were so proud of. The next goblin dies just as quickly as the last, but then Khan makes a mistake. He only kills the goblin and misses the boar he was sitting on. The team watches the fight and realizes that Karn is in trouble. The ball knocks him down and carries him to the goblins. 
Khan is no longer in madness mode. The goblin on the wolf intercepts the boy. Khan finds himself in the clutches of an overgrown wolf and has trouble with his stamina. The goblin readies his spear. Han turns around and stabs the wolf right in the mouth, hitting the goblin through and through. Although he miraculously escapes the spear, the wolf screams and spits out blood. This makes the other wolves very angry. They drool and run away. They will hold for their wolf brother. Aaron is stunned. He sees that the commander needs help, but Han orders him not to go out. He has a plan. He will group them and distract them. But most likely Aaron will still have to go out. He needs to deal with those who are heading into the forest. Han is attacked again, and he dodges again. Yoker is needed. She should be ready to use her magic by now. The mage girl was still in the process, but Jenna was already ready. She finished her preparations, and Han started to run. The two goblins were already chasing him and were close by. The boy sped up, but the goblins were not far behind. They swing their swords, and their blows fly past his hands, which jump up and lands right on one goblin's face. He pushes off and keeps running. The goblins didn't expect such a trick, and Hans was approaching the line connecting the field where Jenna and the magic filled Joker were waiting for him. The girl concentrated. It was as if time had stopped and there was no sound of grass. Han jumped over the line, followed by rabid wolves and goblins. The girl casts a spell, and a giant stream of fire appears, which then turns into a whirlwind. Look! What? The server has crashed. You are disconnected. Please wait. Everything has stopped. Look behind you. This monster is this. It can't be. It's the same asshole from before. With a team assembled from countless heroes and upgraded to six stars, I crossed the 88th floor for the first time in Korea with heroes that were unmatched anywhere. I climbed to the top five in the world rankings. Pick-me-up draws, skills, and battles were all based on luck. The battle ends after the heroes fight on their own, although they can be given basic instructions. They know how and when to use their abilities for unknown reasons. There are many cases when they cannot fight. However, if the game was determined only by rating and luck, I would not have become a ranger. The biggest factor that brought me to pick me up was that I could beat luck with skill, however, is the type. The one who is at level 999. No way, the limit is 99, including 7 stars. You're cursed. Is there anyone else? A disciple of darkness. He says he'll be waiting for you later. After that, they both leave and disappear, disappearing into the woods. Fully restored, rebuilding the server, sorry for the inconvenience. Lena, aren't you worried? Lena, go to the castle in a hurry, stop wasting time. It's not over yet. A disciple of darkness, a monster that wasn't registered to appear on the lower floors. Someone is coming up. One of the knights has turned into something horrible and is attacking his comrades. What the hell? Don't pay attention to what's happening next to you. Run to where we first came out. The number of living dead, 2436. The resurrection of the dead makes the dead alive who meet certain conditions, and these dead attack until their skulls are destroyed. Eddie's orders someone to open the castle door. In any case, it is not the monster that is supposed to appear on the tenth floor. To the soldier's horror, the door opens again. Lena, Halon, enter the fortress. We'll stay by the door. I'll leave Erica to defend the goddess statue with Addis. Hold on until I get back to Jean with all these monsters. Aaron, keep an eye on everything. You'll come back to me alive. Or you'll be food for these monsters. I'll come back with you. Jean, you'll come back, right? Of course I will. Don't die. You too. The door closed. Jean prepares herself mentally. It's done. In front of him is a large number of monsters. They look horrible and disgusting. But it shouldn't be hard if I approach one by one. If I had to face all of them at once, it would be over for me. The only possibility is this. I can't believe he came to life too. At this rate, the door won't last long. Some of the wolves have started to follow Jean. It doesn't look like they're going to leave him alone. 
he made to recover to strike more blows. He was shot. Still continues to advance against the student. Did you get to him to end it all at once? He did. But at what cost? Where is the notification about the end of the scenario? One is over. Then we're done. I don't know any more. I will probably die before the statue of the goddess falls. Another new one star has returned to the arms of the goddess. His fighting spirit will be remembered forever. Curse. There is no death that matters less than this one. I was dragged into a place I don't even know. And after all this hard work, I'm going to die. Jean loses consciousness. His comrades continue to fight for survival. Some were killed in the battle. Others are on the verge. They are almost out of energy. The shining statue of the goddess disappears. The country is being digitized, and it is also disappearing. The scenario is complete. All the survivors raise their MP Shan level. Among everyone, there is a hero waiting to be promoted. Combine the upgrade stones as soon as you have all the ingredients. The adventure dungeon is open. Try to collect the advent stones and other rare ingredients. Congratulations, wizard. You have reached the tenth floor. Jean wakes up. I'm alive. Aaron is sitting in the dining room of the waiting room. Why is he so serious? The boss woke up. Everyone was worried, concerned. Why were you so serious that you looked like that? He was thinking about the reason why they were fighting. After Khan left the fortress, the bodies broke out and flooded the city and. The computer players must have died in a bunch. I think the stress level has increased. Aaron is getting ready to leave. Are you coming back tomorrow looking like this? Tomorrow will be fine. Jean thought it might be to raise spirits. Tomorrow in the dining room, everyone will have an elegant breakfast. Han asked Chloe to cook the best meal she could with the ingredients they had. Fortunately, Lena was fine. So was Aaron. Eureka, too indicates he will be recovering from the stress for a long time. The master is in, the hero is waiting for a promotion. To do this, you need to build an auxiliary building to the fusion hall, called the promotion hall. As soon as it is built, it will be possible to level up heroes, and the synthesis of objects begins, choosing ingredients. With a probability of success of 87%, we start synthesizing. Synthesis is complete, you have received a low-level leveling stone. Thanks to this, he is promoted from one star and is encouraged to reach seven stars and overcome the entire tower. Who else could reach seven stars if not Loki? If that were the case, Ciri would already be here. I did my best, but I could never get the seven-star hero. He threw Jan a business card. Are our kidding? Code name. It has countless names. Just pick one to use depending on the situation that hashtag doesn't matter to you. Did you bring me here? Was it the right thing to do? She asks him not to hate her, so she also didn't expect to be called out. It wasn't intentional, it was an accident. I don't care, send me back if you want to live. Kill me, you're just a one-star hero. You are very ambitious. Over time, it will be a different story so I think the solution is to kill you right now. The shell is headed for his heart. He stops before it does any fatal damage. Despite the fact that the spear touched his heart, Jack did not even blink. He has courage. What do you want? She had countless opportunities to kill me, but instead, she summoned me here. That means she has another goal in mind. She's not asking for much. She just wants to talk to him. Fifth in the world rankings, the indestructible invincible Master Loki. She is also his fan. She was repeatedly impressed by his plays while watching him. The headquarters prioritized snow monitoring. How could I ignore it? She came to tell him the truth about that world. What do you think about the stories of mobile games? Users are not really interested in the story when it comes to gotcha games. They are more interested in the content. For them, the pick me up story is the same. Frankly, it's a stereotype. Most teachers at higher levels are those complainers you've never heard of. Can you tell me where that is? Honestly, I don't want to know. It's the continent of Tanya, 
a town called Nelsa on the Jaime Peninsula. This is the city where they met on the 10th floor. But as you can see, it's just ruins. He starts showing you different cities. Just as he showed him another city, he starts showing him other places and other worlds. This is the current state of all the regions of Tanya. You think it will be different for Nielsen. All the continents of Mobius are like that. More than one million worlds have seen their end in the same period of time. There is a book here that predicts the end of the world. It's a bad ending. Everything ends. The characters in the book have a desire to change the ending. The answer to what they have to do is simple. They just need to bring in characters from outside the book. What you need to do is change the story. Even if the situation is messy, even if space and time are confused and destroyed, a lord from a higher dimension can change history just by watching it. This is the reason why the pygmy was created by Master Loki. I expected a different story. I was expecting an amazing story. So why are you telling me all this? He wants them to work together to save the world. I was already wondering what you were going to say, and you're just talking shit. Think about it, Loki. He's the CEO. A toy, a goddamn witch. You put me through all kinds of suffering, and then you expect me to cooperate with you. What the fuck is this? I will never work with someone like you. Kill me if that's what you want. I'll make sure you do enough damage before you do it. He's bad. He's hurting her. I said all that, but I can't take her right now. I'm only one star. Not yet. I have to become much stronger to finish her off. I don't want to talk to you. Send me back. How frustrating that I used enough power to be able to bring you this place. I really admire you more than any other pygmy master. The rangers are above you, and they are nothing compared to you. Do you want to know why? It's because you've done better than any of them. You probably know where this phrase comes from. Master trust in your connections with your heroes. That's what happens when you finish a book. You are the only person who took this advice to heart. You are the only one out of 100 million teachers. Do you recognize this place, Loki? This is the 80th floor where you were a teacher six months ago. Of all the users, only you and four other masters were able to pass this difficult level. So everyone from the 6th rank down is on the 79th floor or lower. The floor that made me most frustrated was the 80th floor. What was the reason for showing me this? Simple. Just see what happens to me. Sit down, make yourself comfortable. How does it feel to see it with your own eyes, not on a screen? This is not a show. The 80th floor does not specify what the goal is. It was a random level and sometimes the difficulty depended on luck. But all the rangers who tried failed. The rangers called the 80th floor the Wailing Wall. I didn't have anything like it. I already know how to get to the 80th floor. Why are you showing me a video when I'm going through it? There is nothing to tell you. You can look at it and realize it. After overcoming the 79th floor, I was entrusted with the 80th, and most of my forces, except for the core team, were killed. Hell is the only way I can describe this place. One, where the living do not survive, that's what the 80th floor was like. There are various very strong and numerous monsters everywhere. They are fragments. They are the cause of the disease, the heaviness of this floor. That's right. So you know about it too? The game picked me up as different difficulty levels depending on the account. The chances of a challenge also depended on it. What do you think? Is the fact that you couldn't get a 5-star hero just a coincidence? The reason why you couldn't get a 1 was not because I was unlucky, but because there were no heroes left in the tournament with the same difficulty. MHM is one of the few ranks that the company categorizes. It was the worst possible scenario in every way. And yet it remains a mystery how you were able to overcome the 88th floor in those conditions. Some creatures materialize on the floor. 80 heroes are considered the strongest in the game. The big five have reunited. Once there, the monsters on the floor start attacking with pop-ups, mentioning the use of tactics, reducing the difficulty, map mastery, and orders to the heroes. Patterns drawn on the map indicate the moves to be made during the mission. 
These moves are calculated with great precision. This is the tactic you came up with for the 80th floor. It's quite interesting to use the support objects before attacking the enemy. The process is complicated, but the goal is simple. Pay attention to your actions and watch carefully. See what kind of person you are to them. So you are the only teacher here. Your orders? As always, perfect. Failure is not an option. We take it for granted. For us and for him. How do we fight? I am the arrow of the king, not of Jacob. I am the spear of the king Mudenidek July, the sword of the king of Lydia. I the eyes of the king Jurnet, said I the flames of the king Close Anginim. The mission has begun. Wow, it's not that surprising. They have sworn true loyalty to you. These are six stars known as the strongest on the entire server. No one can beat them except seven stars. I guarantee you, you have raised monsters. And with that, in fact, the main thing is not the skill, but how they perceive their teacher. After climbing the tower, the heroes realize the truth and despair. Who would be loyal to someone who treats them like toys or pets? But you are different. You're the only one who really dominated the lobby. It was lucky that you were the king of Nelfer. Even now, the heroes are desperately looking for you. They know you fell here too. Think about what kind of hero would search for months to the ends of the earth just because his master disappeared. Do you think the heroes of the other lobbies would do the same? Your method of playing is unique, but it's also accurate. Such strategies would never have occurred to me. You would never have thought that a teacher would not use synthesis? Masters control heroes through synthesis. If there is any hero who is useless or disobedient, they will ruthlessly get rid of him. And the fear of suffering such a fate is the means that masters use to control their heroes. Even if there were potential low-ranking heroes, they usually served as food for the high-ranking ones. I've never gotten five stars. I only had it as four stars. People told me it was a bad account, suggested I stop playing, but I didn't listen to them. I got used to the unfairness. Not that I didn't use it, I just used it as little as possible. Other teachers use synthesis three or four times a day, but not you. It's basically the same as not doing it. Before you were famous, most teachers played with their heroes like toys, getting rid of them when they got bored, like expendable. Even if the heroes were of low rank, they were never abandoned, and they showed potential. A fear-driven lobby is doomed to fail. Reward those who have proven their worth and punish those who have been useless. Did you know that all the heroes here were human? I don't know how you found out, but your method is impossible if you don't know about it. That's the conclusion I came to. The characters were so realistic that it was hard to believe that they were created by programs. Each one of them reacted differently to the same command, and the different ways they executed the same command were just amazing, but I still didn't believe they were human. That's why you appreciate me, yes. Seriously? I wanted to talk to you in person. I wish it was on the ground. I think the same way. Instead of a meeting place, it would have been your grave. Did you create a strong resentment in me against yourself? I will never forget it, considering how much trouble you caused me. Tony Nelfer has nothing to do with me. I'm from the earth. Don't drag me into other people's problems. Nothing to do with you or the end. I would be disappointed if I heard that. I don't mind. She wouldn't have called me here if all she wanted was for me to go up the tower, because I was doing pretty well at that level. I had almost no losses up to the 88th and 90th floors, where the number one rank lives. But she called me here, and I want you to come out before I run out of patience. All I want from you is for you to reach the floor where I am, so I can tolerate your attitude that the dark apprentice, who appeared on the 10th floor, was your hand, right? It was, don't be angry, I won't interfere from the 15th floor. In Catalonia, there is a special attitude towards you, even if I don't interfere, because it's difficult, that injustice like Nielsen can be great, but I think there is a 90% chance that the teacher will leave it alone. Well, maybe not if you help me. I swear on my name, if you climb the tower to the top floor, I will send you back to earth and one more thing. 
I will give you half of what I own in Mobius, you will become a shareholder in one of the largest corporations. So we have a deal. You just have to get out of my sight. The promise to send me back, and the promise to give me a reward. I don't believe it. You hate me enough, don't you? Why? The higher I climb the tower, the more clues I'll have about it. I will not depend on the garbage like her and go home on my own. That's my answer. Okay, without that spirit, you wouldn't have been able to climb the tower. I'll forgive your recklessness. I'll forgive you. I will show you a real pygmy prologue that I have prepared especially for you. Tangwa, where people and species from other worlds coexist on this Pacific continent. Some unknown enemies have invaded. Catalonia, where people and species from other worlds coexist on this Pacific continent. Some unknown enemies have invaded. The continent was torn apart by the power of darkness. You know why it is so difficult to beg Midas, because you have to change the situation in a losing war to challenge the Loki of fate. But there is hope, dear teacher. If you want to save the world, climb the tower. Many heroes will be by your side. Master, trust your connections with your heroes. The future of the world is in your hands, it is. In your hands. Indeed, the future of the world is in your hands. You can climb to the top floor of the tower, where no one is reached. Countless enemies stand in your way. Powerful enemies hidden in unknown lands. What the hell? Climb the tower and find me. No, we will be waiting for you. A toy, a greeting to the teacher, forgotten memories of the hero awakened. Has Jean been promoted? He became a two-star hero. It's over. Ah, boss, you're back. What were you doing there? You'll be going through what's called a promotion soon, too. What happened? Nothing, just the usual. Her younger sister's name, or something. Your reason why you should go back. My reason hasn't changed either. Go up the tower and come back home. If anything has changed, it's that I'm in a much worse mood. Whoever you are, whatever your name is, I can make you pay for this. The next day, the system apologizes to the user for the error that occurred a day ago on the tenth floor. Teachers on the lower floors of the tower continue to experience server outages. An apology post was published explaining everything. I know the problem was related to a dark learner. You are being compensated for the problems caused. And they congratulate each other on the promotion, although she doesn't look in a good mood, asking if something happened. I knew that you and I were original. Original as in you are the co-owners of hell? Are you surprised? Do you want to know how much he told her? I won't complain to you about it. I wouldn't change a thing. I'm still going to climb the tower. You just have to help me with it. Oh, what did you want to tell me? Do you know what this is? The gift card can be used to buy anything you want. The gift card is from you. Actually, teacher, that idiot finally realized what a great gift card you are. It's a reward for a character you like or who did a good job for you. The price varies depending on the gift, and high-ranking gifts require gems and other valuable ingredients. This card usually costs money, but the event is giving it away for free. A ticket for 10,000 gold. He seems to like me. He should be grateful. The heroes are climbing the tower on their own, and he doesn't even do anything. I don't need it. Give it to someone else. He refused the gift. You can really have anything you want. Food, clothes, jewelry. It doesn't matter. 10,000 gold doesn't get me anything good from the item store. I'm going to bed. Hold off on buying a war horse with this gift card. Giving away the statue gives you gifts. It can improve your relationship with the heroes. What is this teacher gift? Give a gift to everyone, and you will give me something that other heroes complain about. Gifts are given to only one hero. Rewarding those who have done well is what a teacher should do. Each character has their own likes and dislikes. They will not be happy just because you gave them something. If I'm not going to use it, I might as well not have it. Even I know the hobbies and preferences of all the heroes in the top 100 of the Statue of the Naive, the War Horse. Anything, what do you think? Are you surprised or just not thinking about it? A space-time gap opens up. The fact that my level is low is not a problem. 
Right now, the biggest one is internal enemies. The teacher, I understand that he is a beginner, but he is very bad. The load on the bag is so maxed out, probably because of the repetitive training and testing on the 10th floor. A proper master should treat his heroes well. We can't make it to the 11th floor, so neither 8 nor 9. In editing, you have no idea how. Pick me up. Works? Or do you really have a... I'm too good. Complex? More details from Maine Moore. The current floor is 11. That's clear. Get ready. We're going to go to the 11th floor. A well-known term among users. The... I'm too good. Complex. Where users leave all the work to the heroes and believe they have overcome the tower with their own abilities. Usually you have to train the heroes on the lower floors before you can go to the top floor. Does the fact that he's sending us straight to the 11th floor mean he's seriously mistaken? He thinks he's the one who knows how. How do I get to the floor? 100.1 pieces of garbage like him. There are several skeletons coming out of the cemetery tombs. It's that Latvian level 11. I'll think about it after I get rid of these skeletons. Everyone to your posts. One of the reasons why the pygmy is called completely luck dependent is that the difficulty is largely dependent on luck. If you get good characters, it will be easy, and if you get bad characters, it will be hard. What's the point? He synthesized his first four stars and lost four out of five three-star heroes. Isn't that necessarily unfortunate? He put in a lot of effort in the first few hours of the game, leveling objects regularly, crafting items, and taking care of heroes, he did everything according to my strategy, he changed from the fifth floor. After I overcome that, he started to lose his way. He paid five times for a gotcha without even fulfilling the conditions for it, and he threw the last member to the tenth floor without strengthening them. He made a few more mistakes, confusing the hero's ability with his own. Comprehensive masters are those who rely entirely on their heroes. I am very good. On January 11, the Esalen VIP floor was released. It's been a while since I was last promoted. Back to the waiting room. Jean calls and be the one to slavishly show up. Does she always come when the llama asks why she was called? There is something I want to know. I know you can give limited answers. I heard it from your original, but could you please give me at least one vague answer? Okay, I'll only answer your questions once. First question, what is your name? She has more than one husband, one for each world. What you use to refer to Tonya would be Tell. If you have different names for each world, then it's the same for Nelfer. After the tenth floor is cleared, the lobby will be named differently for each master. The name in the lobby is Tanya, but in my account it was Nelfer. The fourth rank was Rangsit, and the third rank was Ezekiel. If Tell's explanation is true, then each host holds the fate of the world in their hands. The current number of worlds exceeds 10000000 and continues to grow. The next question is, what is Amoebius? If you mean a Mobius company, wouldn't this company be a spiral with countless worlds? Is that the reason why each account has different quests and there were no repeat characters? I think I know who this woman is. This is no ordinary person. Of course, you can't be a teacher if you're not a person from the earth. That's not what I meant. I asked him if he did something to you, and if he hasn't thought of it, he asks him to wait a bit. He'll go check. I will stop thinking about Mobius and all these complicated problems. There is no need to clarify things at the moment. After waiting a little bit, come back and check it out with the news. There's nothing to worry about. You're sure he's a regular user. Can you trust him? He asked the company's CEO. I see him in the training room. I realize that no one has weighed anything. This means that these bad plays are just his mistakes. He was right. I understand the I'm too good. Complex. If something bad gets worse, it will happen sooner or later. Volcano trains not only with Usher, but also with 8 is 3 on 1. It's too hard. The resort of anything is still in its initial phase. If you take the right steps, I can get you back to where you were before. 
Jean and her team are summoned. They are wondering if they will go to the 12th floor. They are surprised that I am climbing the floor so quickly. It's only been 12 days since we cleaned the 11th floor. Not even a single day has passed if you count the time on the ground. If we go to the 12th floor, we will have done two floors in one day. I don't ask if Anna will come in. And I know what the floor level is, that something chose the 12th floor. I knew this. The characters can express their opinions and ask for something from their masters. Sometimes they disobey them. I refuse to go. Hansel refused to participate in what? I'm not going. You think I'm joking. You are not going to go. You can only not go because you had to go no matter what. Didn't I tell you that you can refuse? Of course, you have to face the consequences. Lena had never heard of this. Not before. Those who refused used to be forced. It's because they don't know how to do it. And when they ask us to reconsider, it's dangerous. And sending us to a dungeon like this is not. I know what you want to tell me. You can refuse to participate in the dungeon. But you can't do the same with the synthesis. If something upsets me, I will be synthesized. I'm not leaving. And now he wants to know what will happen to them. How will they fight without him? I will not stop them in their decision. If my boss doesn't go, I won't go either. You should have said earlier that this possibility exists. It's so frustrating that I have to do it alone. Group 1 is not operational. Sometimes heroes do not obey orders. Is it possible to solve this problem by listening to their demands? Or by punishing the hero who started the strike? Punish yourself. I didn't put this window there, I know. My question is, what will Anna do now? We'll see how the teacher reacts. Inchin seems very surprised. He would never have thought that the hero would refuse to follow his orders. Even if he had known about this possibility, he would have read the textbook. The Oedipi, the Rerica are called Oedipi. He thought they would leave. He wonders why his team was called. We decided not to go. Gives a brief explanation of the situation Aetis. It's a dangerous thing. If you don't prove your word to the owner, you will die. It is clear that disobeying orders will not be tolerated. Or you would end your own life if the teacher asked you to. I thought you were fighting for your life. In no case does a hero have such a thing as loyalty. They all fight because they don't want to die. Edith tells her team that they will be the ones to go. They need to become stronger. Besides, she doesn't want to be synthesized. He hints that he doesn't agree with Han's behavior. And the question is, what will happen to them now? John has no idea. Everything will depend on the master's decision. There she is surprised that he says these words. I will tell you that if I die from the fusion, I will resign immediately and never disobey the master's orders again. So you won't die. There is no chance that you will die. I recognize that you have determination. They have grown. Pop-ups are starting to appear. Tell me he was bleeding out. And also HDP. Both will be cut for a period of time. It seems the second floor is more difficult than 11. The second team is coming back. They're defeated. How did it go? He did. How can I disobey orders? It's too easy. Eddie refused to participate. The other team is not working. Things are worse than I. Now he thought both groups were inoperable. He could no longer participate in the main dungeons or others. The lobby is in a state of paralysis. We may have disobeyed the teacher, but we will do what we always do. We will not stop training. All dungeons were open for three days as compensation for the error in the system. We need to replenish our potions and also need to level up. We can enter the dungeons on weekdays at our will. So we will go there. Are you worried that the teacher will leave the game? He can do what he wants. If he doesn't, we still won't be able to get past the tower. I'd rather be synthesized and die painlessly than die, leaving my body and soul to fight. It's not hard to solve this problem. As Rada says, he can simply synthesize the hero who provoked the riot. Of course, the stress level of the heroes will increase and morale will drop. But they will not be disobedient. 
He can buy gifts or level up objects to boost their morale. Of course he won't. Nothing is reasonable. The next day, we went to a mundane dungeon to collect elemental stones for a level up. Olga and I. Lena and Aaron split into pairs for two different dungeons and were able to get the basic fire elemental stone. After that, we continued training. My sword shield skill reached level 6. I reached a level where I needed extreme training to reach higher levels. Either I need to find opponents of the same level or add debuffs during training. I told her, Olga, Ether, because it only specializes in one area. Train telekinesis magic until you get the ability of the same name. Do you want to spend the rest of your days eating only potatoes? Nothing went online that day and the next day. There he is concerned that the teacher has not contacted him through Diaz. Perhaps he has indeed abandoned him. The teacher connected welcome to Pygmy. Maybe the teacher changed his mind. I don't believe it. If your complex was so easy to cure, he wouldn't be so sad. It's obvious what he was thinking. Maybe he'll just use the gems he got through the reward to change the dungeon's core group. The extended challenge has begun. Three challenges will be made with gems. The challenge is rare. The master has received a three-star hero Stein, a three-star hero plus, and a three-star hero Tazer. They'll be joined by new heroes, think Adis, like they did with Wind Energy and Roderick, who they'll have to deal with. We're not going to do that. There is no need. They can't join our group either. Will you see what happens? As soon as the three showed up, they started arguing. They start insulting each other, which leads to threatening each other with weapons. A hostile relationship developed between the new characters. As soon as they arrived, they started quarreling. One of them approaches and asks if he got there before the information gentleman introduces himself as being in Rostov. I ask you for a favor to help him stop these two from listening to him. Because what would I do? He's just a newbie. But he thinks that no one will listen to a rich guy who is lucky enough to have wealthy parents. He can forgive insults to himself, but never when it comes to his parents. You reach ten questions. What's going on? I think they don't love each other. The chemistry between the characters is important. There are combinations of characters that give bonuses to characteristics when they are together. But there are also combinations that reduce the characteristics between the characters. Although they rarely start fighting, they are almost never summoned. The shield protects the pair. Israel must be upset about all the fuss. Threatening to kill them if they don't calm down, she appears to them as a mediator of a teacher. They won't do anything stupid, because she is much stronger than they all are. Maestro, anyway, you can't quarrel in the lobby. This time I would just let it go. Besides, he says to get rid of them both. She doesn't plan to work with them. She prefers to party with Han. They don't decide who to team up with. Only the teacher can do that. Part Y has been created. The space-time gap has opened. Will Jean retire? Will she go to bed? They don't care. They won't come back. Pop-ups appear quickly. Takara goes into a frenzy. He attacks his companions. He's bleeding. He's gone insane. He's attacking his allies. They've killed an ally. Ah, I'm trying to sleep. Takara returned to the arms of the goddess. Marcella returned to the arms of the goddess. Steel has returned to the arms of the goddess. Those alerts are pretty loud. Team 3 is dead. You've lost. And she looks very scared. Teacher, are you sure she wants to go out so badly? Goodbye. The hope I had disappeared in an instant. Now it is very possible that anything will leave you. You do not know what to do. What happens if you quit? What will happen to the two of them? The account will be deleted if the teacher does not connect within six months. Six months of logging out is a year and a half here. You can keep the sheep. It cannot continue to exist if you do not interact with it. It is afraid of disappearing. It has not lived yet. Don't be so dramatic. It's not safe to leave it. Don't worry. If he was of such weak will, he would have done it much sooner. In any case, why are you so desperate? Will he die if we close the tower or something? 
Yes. What? You will die. I'll disappear. Oh, really? MMM. Wait. Six. What about Nelfer? I guess I don't have time. The next day. If you want to buy something, make it movable. The teacher's decisions are supported. You have chosen the triple gold package. The master has started an advanced challenge. You did not get a hero. Winning, you got the hero Edgeland. They need to be trained. Do you want to try? Not me. Who are you if you don't want to die? You talk a lot. Can I hear you on the training grounds? Edith helps too. At least he's not as ruthless as the people who came with you. How could you? No, I don't mean the new guy. I mean Jan. Three challenges in a row. I believe you know what you're doing. You're planning to pick two one-star stars to complete the team. There are people who combine high and low rank heroes. But the skills should be balanced. It's much better to do five serials in a row. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry to start the training. You've just arrived, but you need it. A space-time gap opens up, and they are put to the test. The new three weren't the worst, as Team 1 was seriously injured, but they managed to complete the mission. They seemed to understand their roles well. A few days later, filling in the situation doesn't look good for them. They can steal your positions. The newcomer seems to like to play with the weak, although he is a coward with the strong. Let it be. More time passed. They didn't have a mage, but the balance in their team was good. Team 3 was growing steadily. No one was losing. The plan for anything seemed to go smoothly. The jury was speechless. I think you have reached the basic level. You have made a breakthrough. On the other hand, the teacher has not improved at all. The lobby has good facilities, but they are oversaturated with heroes. After the tenth floor was cleared, new facilities were opened, but since then, there have been no more. His attention is fully focused on Computer 3. The preparations for the fifteenth floor are going well. Team 3 realized that the teacher liked them, and they started to show their true colors. For now, it's little things like yelling at Cloud to bring them more meat. But if they step foot on the fifteenth floor, it's likely to get worse. The group is summoned. They have all been waiting for this moment. They are taking the positions that other teams have worked so hard to achieve. I'm not complaining because they have more opportunities than they do. When they were on the tenth floor, a space-time gap opens up. The impudent boy threatens that when he returns, he will tell the teacher to punish him. You are popular. What will happen if these people come back? If they pass the fifteenth floor, do we have to start obeying the master, or could we die? It's not impossible for your team to overcome the fifteenth floor. There are times when the parts you expect to die succeed. If that's the case, then anyone else will be more convinced that it's a good thing, and that we won't be needed anymore if they come back. So obey from now on, don't resist. Of course, by then, I will already be synthesized. Whether they succeed or fail is entirely risky. This is the place. Everyone is waiting to see what happens. Team members 1 and 2 have been in for 5 minutes after entering. I think that 5 is doing well because the pop-up has not appeared. What's going on? Mission failed. Massacre. All the heroes turn to the arms of the goddess. The entire team of 3 is dead. Only five minutes have passed. It must have been a special mission. What's going on? The teacher is leaving the game. The teacher just let go of his phone. This is a big problem we are going to solve. A lot of people are watching, let me. Let's go back. There's nothing else to see. What about Team 3? They're all dead. They were wiped out before it even started. They probably didn't even know about the 15th floor. So they died for nothing. After that, nothing was connected again for a long time. Despite this, on the training fields. And if he's desperate, he can't even sleep because he doesn't know what to do. We just have to go on with our lives as usual. We will shoot breakfast, training, food, training and more training until lunch. It's been 10 days now. The other stars are starting to get lazy. They're getting carried away because there's no master. 
No fusion to worry about. No one even goes to the dungeon on the weekend. More than a few. Ten days here is three days in real life. Full download Bienvenido a Pygmaea. The one who returned. A rather intense flash illuminates the lobby. You have just taken a screenshot. The image will be saved to your gallery. The teacher is logged out. Did you come in just for that? Are you thinking of quitting the game? It's not that he didn't do anything. He just picked on you. Why do you think he did it? To have a memory. Can you tell me again what your hobby is and sell she surfing the internet? So you can connect to the internet? Yeah. He has an idea. Are you going to have to help me? Wait, are you going to use the internet here? If I can, yes. Of course you can. So why all the fuss? It's not easy to intervene in another dimension. There will be penalties. You need to collect enough intervention points left by the master. If you are going to just watch, you have more than one hour. But if you want to intervene directly by writing a post or commenting, you will have much less time. It's going to be hard on my niece if I hate that this is the case. It's been quite a while since I last visited Ragnar Loki's blog. I still have to use it. Myself? If possible, yes. It is good if it is for you, Loki. And if he uses his magic powers to cause interaction to be able to navigate. It won't last long. Do you need to be in this position? This is my position to focus. Hurry up. Stay calm if you are tired. It will be quick. It's been a while since I came to this site. Let's have a look at the help forum. I knew it. Hi, I want to ask about something less than a month ago. When I started everything went smoothly at first, but lately I hit a wall. I'm sure I did what I was supposed to do. I'm sure I did everything the way I was supposed to. This is what my girlfriend looks like now. This is my picture. I'm really a game character, right? Who drew it? The whole world is worried about him in the comments. You really play the way you got to the 14th floor. If I were your character, I would have just left. Did it seem like you were doing everything right at first, and then you went somewhere else? Did you put them in one group despite the fact that they were enemies? Did you want the Colosseum or something? Yes, that's true. But why are the statistics of these two stars like that? It's weird. How many abilities does he have? I don't have much time, and you've reached your limit. If he delivered documents to my cloud something, then he must change. Check your email. You just need to read what I sent. Users will recognize the real Loki. Maybe I should have posted anonymously. Okay, I get it. Oh, really? Of course, I did what I had to do. Now it depends on how you perceive something. It looks like you sent her something. What was it? My game notes and other documents, holy writ. Is there a rumor that the existing textbook is not complete, that the real one is the one with Locke, and apparently the book has everything about the game? Did you send it to the teacher? Get away from me. Are you right? In the middle, I sent my plays and documents of the analysis I've been doing for two years. It's almost a thesis. I can't believe they actually existed. I cannot say that it contains everything about the pygmy, but it is true that it has everything of mine. Although I don't know if I'll read it all in English, it's like three to four books, because I didn't think anyone else would read it. But if you really read it all and really understand it, then things will get really interesting. You will lose interest and either quit or try again. Full download, welcome to pick up. It's finally here. The lucky one is a teacher's gift. Buying a wooden war horse for the con. Bring me here. Are you going to break it again? Please edit the end of the document before submitting it. I put a sentence about the hero, who likes the war horse more than two times will be satisfied with the wooden horse statue. Increased commitment. This means that you have read everything. I don't need a regular player as a teacher. If he is really trying to climb the tower, he must be at my level, otherwise he will tell us that he can control me. He probably doesn't understand the whole document, but if you have the desire, I will make you the best teacher I can make. Apparatus 1 is functional. There he is concerned that the teacher has not changed. It is impossible. You asked when the next opportunity to use the internet will be? 
It depends on how quickly the intervention points are scored. What is an intervention point? This is what Mobius uses to intervene in cause and effect in rules. When a teacher comes in, the intervention points increase. They accumulate faster if you go up a floor, and the gems are a physical representation. The gem contains the power of creation. This is the power that money has in real life. Human money has a strong resentment. Virtual money is great, but it's better when it's cash. If you bring money to the headquarters, you get a 1% bonus. Only 1% are that greedy. We are coming in for the first time in a long time. We have been resting for a long time, and equipment one is in good working order. From now on, we will give up the fight. Amazing master, did you change the way the heroes think? No one complains that they have to go to battle this time. They don't want to fight. Yes, you want to fight safely. Boss, even if the master changed his mind, we're still a group of four, we're missing a member. Don't worry about it. The teacher asked Edis to temporarily join Team One. They decided to fight again, as you can see. What about the teacher? You'll see. The second team is ready. Adis has joined the team. The space-time gap opens. I will not stay long. That is not my intention. You can leave the second team when we pass the 15th floor. More main donkey, current floor 8. Will the doors open? Are you ready? Floor 8, type of emission submission. It's time to show the results of the level 9 goblin riders training. Invest. Filling shots are now more powerful. It can create in 10 seconds what used to take 40. Why did they call me then? Because it is filled, it can shoot faster. Now I can trust him with my back. You got bored. It was fun to watch. Edith didn't fit in with the team. But she's smart. She'll adapt soon. Eureka has become more flexible thanks to magic. That's all for today, right? I used a lot of magic. It's definitely different from the last time. It's not over yet. I get tired when I use magic. Don't worry. You won't have to use it. I don't believe you. You've already fooled me with those words before. Teacher, there is a participant available for research. Why don't you try to create it? He told Yoka that he doesn't have to physically demand it. What you have to do is research. You can get research points by putting participants in the lab. You can upgrade the lobby with points. And suddenly it seems to him that Yoka has been appointed as an investigator. She always looks like that, but she doesn't do it because she wants to. Do you see the table? From there, you just have to solve the problem and put it in the container next to it. This is what he learned at the academy. You should only do this if you don't want to be punished. I can't read any of this. He keeps trying. He succeeded. He got a research score. The current speed is 10 points per hour. In an hour, 10 gems will be spent. 10 points per hour is not good. The efficiency is poor. I suppose this is to be expected since she has no investing skills. 